All right, I got twelve thirty on the atomic clock. <laughs> so, quit calling it this. Every time you say that. <laughs> Who wants to start? Mark or Larry? Let's see. Uh, Hi, T. All right. Morning, Larry. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Larry. Uh, you see, my budget proposal is coming in at about forty-one thousand under uh, 2024 levels. We had some savings in the contractual area due to some changes we made to some circuits. Uh, for instance, with the fiber project being done, we were able to cancel some circuits to the other remote buildings like the old Council on Aging and EMS Health Department and so on. So we saved some money there, and then we also got rid of the POTS lines related to 911 calls from remote buildings with that emergency responder project. That saved which particular one? POTS. Oh, plain old telephone system, P-O-T-S, <laughs> all caps. Uh, the phone lines that you had for 100 and some odd years, uh, that's a POTS line. It really stands for plain old? Yes, that's, yes, that's, that's exactly, exactly what it stands for, plain old <laughs> telephone system. That's the old copper. It was better off, though. Mm -hmm. Was it? Simpler place. <laughs> that, that's actually the phone service used that. Yeah, POTS lines. But they're very expensive. They were charging $1,700 a month for this like 10 POTS lines because AT&T doesn't want anybody to use that antique technology because they don't want to keep replacing copper wire to make it work. So they're discouraging everybody. Well, they discouraged us right out of it, that's for sure. <laughs> so we're saving a bundle there, and that's why you see those two line items went down. As far as personnel, it seems level, but it's not really level. We had some savings because of uh, personnel changes that happened from a higher paid employee to a or paid, and we only have five full-time positions. So that's uh, a synopsis of my budget in a nutshell. Uh, I did no capital outlay projects for 2025. That was another savings. We had uh, 40000 roughly in 2024s for capital outlay. There's none uh, present in the 2025. That would have uh, removed any of my 41000 reduction if I had capital outlay, I imagine. So this is the tight, tightest budget I can possibly provide you. It shows. Commissioners, I uh, wanted to just uh, want to call out one of the things that Larry talked about. We mentioned it just briefly, but the fiber project that we did that connects three of our facilities now. Sorry, three. Yeah. Um, uh, that we did that with uh, CARES Act funding, mm -hmm. and it, we have an ongoing savings now because of it. So just another example of we invested in infrastructure with that money, and it pays off long term. Oh, absolutely. That was, uh, if I remember the number right, we spent around $600,000 on the fiber project, and it's connecting health department, EMS headquarters, Alan yep. Eisenhower, Justice Center, the courthouse, and the Cushing facility. Uh, so not only is it providing connectivity, which is saving us money, it's providing increased connectivity that we never had before. And that increased bandwidth is what's allowed us to have our high availability servers at the Cushing facility uh, for a redundant failover. So it's expanded uh, the services at the same time as we're getting a residual savings year to year. So that thing is going to pay for itself over the course of the coming years. But it was definitely a, a really great, in my opinion, a really great thing that we did with that money. Yep. Yeah, it was. I don't believe I ever could have got that kind of funding by coming up here in a budget meeting. <laughs> well, I can guarantee you. Yeah, just, I'd have probably got my been on the box line still. Right, right. <laughs> I couldn't have pulled that off. We couldn't have. No. I've got no questions. I don't either. It went down. You're not going to find $2 million. I was <laughs> watching all of the meetings. We were looking. <laughs> I know you're looking for two million. I, I don't have it to give you. Give extra zeros out there. I can give you forty-one thousand. There's a, an Annie on there. There's a start. There's forty-one. Yeah. <laughs> Mark it down. A couple pennies in the hat. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Larry? No, you're doing a great job, Larry. Thank yeah, Larry. Us. Appreciate you guys. Like I say when they go down, they're pretty easy. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Well. Good luck to you on your 1.9 yeah, million only, million yeah. to go. Minus your 47. <laughs> or okay. Okay. on deck circle. Too quick. 
Mm. That's what I said. <laughs> you said they were. That's what I yeah. said. They won't be in time. Okay. I have Becky checking to see if anybody else is. Kind of hard during lunch hour. It is. Yeah. Probably aren't back for the lunch. I'll catch him as we go along. So while we're waiting, I got a question, Mark. Yes. State unfunded mandates. Is there a requirement for, uh, I don't know how to say this really, minimal um, effort on the county's part? So, for instance, if something is a state unfunded mandate, uh, just say no, chemical, we, chemical, chemicals, 25 percent. Can we, we buy? To. Can we buy one jug on the shelf? No, we're actually if if there's a bigger demand than what the what we buy, we we're to probably going to get uh, hit up by the state. I guess mm -hmm. um, if they mandate that we provide the chemicals, mm -hmm. so there's no limitation. Like we don't get to say, well, we did our best. That's what our budget is. They, we potentially they will send us a nasty gram saying you have to get one. Right, if somebody would call the state because they couldn't get chemicals at the Knox's Weed Department, yeah, they'd call the yeah. state and they'd say, you know, no, it's a state statute. Yeah, but that's what I'm getting yeah, at. Is no, so it, what's the what's the maximum fine though, or consequences? Well, we just get a nasty letter. So yeah, you, you're doing the right thing because it's the right thing versus doing the right thing because you're afraid of the penalty. Yeah. Well, we do the right thing because it's the right thing. Right. Nine times out of ten, there's not a specific penalty. Sometimes they put penalties on where the person who fails to follow through is then um, could be prosecuted for, for criminal acting, mm -hmm. and usually that's at one of the elected officials. But there are some positions that are some things that they will tell us if you fail to do this, you will be prosecuted. Unlike the legislature, we have to follow the law. That's what I was thinking, Doug. I see. It's true. I know. We can't vote to say we're not going to follow the law. Yeah, I just didn't know what the consequences exactly would be. I mean, maybe that would, would it be. I don't know how to fight these unfunded mandates and get people to understand that's where thirty or forty percent of our budget is state unfunded mandates. At least. At least. Well, it's probably more than that. When you talk about the court system, all that that we got to do. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to put that figure together, uh, Mark and I, for a minute, and it just kept growing. It's like we thought we had them all, and then, oh, what about this? Oh, then there's this. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> pages and pages. So well, we're, it, we're up the last to, 25 years has been the worst. Yeah, we're up to about 40%. It's, it's we'll just more. say the last 20 years. It's, it's more. Been the worst. All right, Mr. Crossley. Well, Come on down. Ready. Don't look at us that way. <laughs> I saw the way I, I saw the way you looked at us. <laughs> yeah, he went out the he went he went out the window. <laughs> Good afternoon. Afternoon, Steve. Here to present our budget for the district court. Uh, our chief judge uh, is not available today, unfortunately. Uh, sends her regrets. Um, as far as our budget as a whole, uh, we, uh, for the third year session, we uh, are seeking the same amount overall, uh, 308 and 441. We have uh, changed some line items, uh, added uh, some out of that money to some line items, and took some out of others, uh, but it all comes out to the same amount. Uh, we believe, as we have the last two years, that uh, this amount of funding uh, will be adequate uh, to meet uh, the court's obligations uh, for uh, the next fiscal year. And with that, I don't have any questions. Another one bites the dust. Uh, they're wanting to know, is there $2 million available in your budget? <laughs> We're checking with everybody. <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, I 
Fortunately, uh, not, not at this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're checking with everybody, so it's a, you're not the only one. <laughs> I also said I'd settle for a mix. Yeah, yeah, you did. Up by the door, you can drop your <laughs> <laughs> uh, We'll see what we can do. Half a penny will do. What's better than what we had commitments in the last. <laughs> so I have a question. I'm not sure it's this is the right department. So that's I'm asking which department also in my question. When someone can't afford a court, uh, an attorney for a criminal case and they get a court appointed attorney the what is the protocol to figure out whether that person can afford an attorney actually or not well the, uh, the person seeking appointment has to fill out an affidavit which is uh, this document sworn to uh, which they uh, specify their financial uh, their financial, uh, what their income is, and so on. Uh, and the uh, presiding judge in that particular case, whether it's a criminal case or juvenile, wherever the, the, the criminal uh, proceeding is involved, will review the affidavit and make a determination whether or not the person qualifies to receive court appointment. They don't require a W two W four form of any proof Not of how much that they I'm need. aware of. I, uh, I I I can't say certainty about that, Commissioner. But I uh, I checked on those about a year. Decisions ago. are made by presiding judges, and I, okay. I'm not involved in those. Okay. Are there fees associated with the defendant's fees associated with? Receiving a court-appointed attorney? I'm yes. Just, yes. Right, right. Okay. So is that the same with a minor? Yes, sir. So uh, court, if a minor is there, uh, uh, can their parents be billed for that expense? It, the, the cost can be assessed back to the parents, yes. Or it should be. It, it's specified yeah. in statute yeah, that it should can. Uh, the court can. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. I don't know. This is an easy one. Thanks, Steve. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you for Thanks. staying the same budget as last year. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You're right again. Thank you all. Good day. Thank you. Next, register days more or afternoon. Good yeah. afternoon. Sorry. Um, well, my general fund budget for 2025 shows a, a decrease. The figures, um, it's actually a little bit different than what you have. I, I was able to find a, a little bit more savings. We are uh, have four full-time positions that are funded. In June, my deputy left us for a better paying job, which created a bit of savings on her full-time replacement, but she agreed to move into an IOC position, so we're not going to lose that knowledge uh, base. And when two staff had to be off at the same time, she was able to come in and cover the office. Um, I also have a Rod Tech budget, which is... Um, $169,211. Uh, we have completed about 300 digitized books that were waiting to be back indexed when I took office. And due to the completion of my scanning project, we have an additional 485,000 images that need to be manually read and then reviewed and specific information is typed into specific fields so that the documents are searchable, and this greatly eases the workload for title companies and professional researchers. So the back index projects also revealed 
gaps in our digital land record. We have done four additional smaller projects on top of the, the large one that I first started with. The last project is still pending. The original plan of an additional $425,000 to be spent on Condor to do our back indexing was scrapped. And we take longer, but I feel that our work is more accurate. And um, so all back indexing is done in-house. Uh, to date, I've spent $247,624 on scanning projects. Um, earlier today, I was watching uh, the budget reviews, and, and uh, Commissioner Mike Smith stated we need to talk to our electeds to um, see if they can help us out more. I, I want you to know I am doing everything I can to try and help the county conserve financial resources. Um, I was able to help Public Works by giving $22,000 for the aerial photography next year. Um, the reduction in uh, contracts is due to microfilm storage. When uh, Midwest micro Micrographics was sold, uh, to vital scan, they gave notice that our 75 cents per tape rate was going to over five dollars a tape. And rather than give them forty-two hundred dollars a year, I did a one-time spend about a safe that's in county storage, and uh, no more storage fees. I uh, drove to another county to scavenge hardware for plat storage, and uh, another register of deeds was going to a different. Um, storage system and that saved the county about five thousand dollars right there and we've had five computers die on us I did not replace one re computer that was uh, uh, I'd, I'd call it a convenience computer so we still expect two to three more computers to die they're all of the same make and model about the same year I I want to I want to highlight something on the reduction in my budget. This is due to the salaries being split between the general fund and the rod tech fund. The, the, due to the nature of tasks that I can assign staff, they meet the requirements of using rod tech funds to pay salaries. So we are extremely slow on our recordings. I was expecting us to take five to six years to uh, completely back index our land records. But we have, um, we're already in book four, about 440 on our way down to zero. So I, I want to, you know, it, it's great for the researchers, but I, I just want to be very clear that my ability to fund from Rod Tech on salaries ends when those projects end. And so right now I may look like a hero because I'm able to keep the, the budget really low, but in about three to five years, I'm going to come back with a massive increase. And I, I just want to be very upfront. That's going to come. I'm helping as much as I can right now, but um, when when those projects are done, the funds are all going to the salaries are all going to have to be funded by by general funds. Um, the in, there wasn't an increase in um, the travel. Um, and training, I guess, inflation, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I was so shocked at the increase of hotels and airfare at the last seminar that I went to. I felt I really needed to go for that property fraud training, and I paid $700 out of my own pocket. It's that important to me. But I did increase um, travel and, and education lines. Um, for Rod Tech, my, my HP plotter is, has been acting sketchy. It's still working. I, I try to use it to the very last moment. I did get a pricing on um, a replacement. At today's cost, it's $14,000. At some point, that's going to come out of Rod Tech. And one replacement computer um, that we buy will be through Rod Tech when, when it's needed. So I will answer any questions that you have. 
maybe your doom and gloom predictions will turn around, like maybe the interest rate will go down and everybody will be refinanced. Maybe and people filing. will want to move. Maybe there will yeah. be housing inventory that they can move, and we'll have filings again. Star bonds will be out there, and people <laughs> want to move. But maybe there will be a miracle, and we'll have mortgage registration <laughs> fees right. returned to us. Oh, you there know, you go. There's Never a thought about that. that. Would be nice, wouldn't it? That'd I, be a gift. Um, just for your information, I have been tracking – if we were to receive mortgage registration fees, mm -hmm. what what we are missing on income, you want to guess what our uh, income? A little under a million dollars a year. Oh, try We've had million-dollar months million for dollar some months. some of the recordings that we've had. Yeah, this year this year alone. So I, I mean, we're close to three million that we've lost. Three million dollars. They put the. Ad, local ad valorum tax at $4 yeah. million. Dollars we, would, we would be able to $7 million. Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, yeah, I caught, whenever so. you get a chance, thank your legislatures for all this. Because mm -hmm. that's where the buck stops. Well, and, and or you know, started at this too. point, it's not like they haven't been told they have repeatedly been. that this is what you're doing to local governing and it seems to not matter i mean i think that that when you didn't know and didn't realize what you were doing how with what the impact was is one thing but when you're fully aware of what that impact is and you continue to mm -hmm. to definition of insanity collecting the same people yeah. at the same time um so we're talking a seven mil reduction if just for the two items, the mortgage filing fees and the doggone local ad valorem tax. Yeah. Not the, counting any of the other stuff. Right. With the stroke of a pen in Topeka. Yeah. Yeah. It seems, seems so simple, simple to keep, me. Keep yelling at the wrong people and see if it gets fixed. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it at all. I don't get it, yeah. You're doing a great Seven job. Yeah, Terry. Good Thank job, you. Terry Lowe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for no questions. This responsible. Oh wow, you guys were easy on me this year. Yeah. Well, you were kind of easy on us too, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's hard yeah. to yell at you when they go down. When you, yeah, when I have a negative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can't you go down anymore? Thank you. Where's that million? <laughs> thank you very much. There's a, another 12000 there, Mike. <laughs> Keep adding up. Okay, how are you doing? Thank you. Afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Treasure. All right. This is my first go at this, so. It's easy. Get ready. It's going to be tough. All right. Mm -hmm. It's easier when you're. Proposing the same revenue neutral. Anything in particular you want to point out? Taylor? Um, not really. I uh, so I went ahead just so everyone knows. I went ahead and pulled the personnel spreadsheet from last year and this year, and if you add up. Um, where we were at as an office last year with the total for the general for personnel and the general for treasurer and where we are today, we are actually $130,000 less than where the office was at last year. So <clears throat> we're doing good. There's a lot of corrections that need to continue to be made in the office. Like one thing about our office is it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of Paper is expensive, envelopes are expensive, but you really shouldn't see a lot of fluctuations in our expenses. Um, one thing this year that we're going to have is we're going to have an excessively high postage. The, when the state decided to change the license plates from the embossed plates to the flat plates, they placed the burden of that extra postage on the counties. So we're going to have a higher than normal postage this year. But other than that, I think we're good. Um, I came in far enough down that I was able to bump up my amount for travel and training a little bit. Um, I've got three. Our previous budget for that was $100. I am going to all the conferences and working towards being a certified treasurer, which I don't believe we had before, so I think that's important to go to those training sessions. Um, also, I just want to get on the record. 
In regards to the special motor vehicle fund, I know there's been a lot of confusion about it. <clears throat> I have, uh, let me get the right page here. I got a lot of papers. I don't have it. No, I do have it. So in the state statutes, which is um, KSA-145, in regards to the Special Motor Vehicle Fund, any balance remaining in the fund at the close of the calendar year shall be withdrawn and credited to the general fund of the county prior to June 1st of the following calendar year. So I know there's been some confusion about this, but this has never been optional. This is state mandated and state required. On May 31st of this year, $60,740 was transferred out of the motor vehicle fund and into the general fund. So this year we are in compliance with that statute. Now what that did was, since we are operating pretty level, we're seeing that fund drop a little bit below zero right now. But as we move forward throughout the rest of the year and continue to generate revenue, we should see that come back up to normal. A little bit more towards that million, Jeff. <laughs> There's a thousand. <clears throat> any commissioners have any questions for Taylor? I don't. Okay. Okay. Well, that was easy. It's, it's easy right. one. I, I, do easy. One, I do have one question. Go ahead. Okay. If sure. you were going to proceed with your audit, what, what budget would that come out of? Um, I kept a placeholder of about $7,000 for outside accounting and auditing in this budget so I have some money to play with. One of the things that I'm able to do to save money on that since Mr. Lloyd is doing some, he's basically giving me free consulting so he's allowing me to find the data. So I'm doing a lot of the work which is saving us money. So when it comes down to time that if we need to get to the point where he needs to look at the data because because it's complicated, then we can look at that. But it'd be a, we're looking at doing it pinpointed, so we're not doing a full. Does that make sense? So we're looking at specific areas where there could be problems, or we could need to make changes, and then and then we can target those specifically without spending an exorbitant amount of money. So I do have a plan, and I'm going to keep the cost as low as absolutely possible. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. The driver's license renewal down at Tong and Oxy, mm -hmm. and, uh, is that going to resume? Absolutely. So we have a really unique situation this year. We, we have two staff members that are going to be leaving at almost the exact same time for almost the exact time period. That coincides with our busiest time of the year and when other staff members are taking vacation. Um, we really we brainstormed, we thought about it, really the only option was for a brief period of time just to suspend that driver's license service. It'll resume in October. It could resume as early as September, but we kind of won't know until we know. But either in September or October. It's not a huge issue as far as funding because in 2023 that only generated $17,000. I mean, that's more of a net negative to start with. It's a service to the Southern County. It's not something that we're generating a ton of revenue, revenue on. We're just providing that service to the Southern part of the county. The state, that's a state function that we're doing on their behalf. And it's their <clears throat> computer system, it's their software, it's our employee, but the kickback and revenue on that's not very high. It's really a net negative. So the Southern County is going to lose that service for 12 weeks, but then it'll be right back, if that makes sense. Because it would take longer to hire and train a temporary employee during that period of time than what we're even going to be down. So it makes no sense. So we're, in effect, subsidizing the state's process for driver's license. Basically, yeah, yeah. So driver's license is 100% a state function, and that's why, it, that's why it's not full service like we have here in town. It's renewals only, and it's just a service to help out the southern part of the county to be able to get the renewals quickly. And, and it takes, a, like, a full-time person to do that. Um, we, we do it by appointment only, and they schedule them throughout the day, <coughs> like, every... I, I, 45 minutes or an hour, so they have time to bounce around and do other things. But yeah, it's it, it's an employee. Now we are working on cross training everyone in that office because in the past there's been some issues with well when that person was gone they closed that for the day. And going forward, I want everyone cross trained so we don't Still lose the amount that of time. service. What's the, that? The amount of time it takes is it's, whether it's three people doing it or one. It's 
still close to a full-time position. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. clearly that is, we're subsidizing a state function. We are, yeah. Because yeah. We are. a staff yeah. member with benefits is going to be at least double what they're right. getting reimbursed. And just in this period of time where we're going to stop doing that, I'm getting a lot of pushback. Yeah, oh, I get it. You it's know, it's I, a nice service. It I'm is a nice saying. service. But yes, well, we it are. It is a nice service. But city. is it something that we can afford to do? And and that's, you know, something we can talk about because it's not a, a I thought maybe it was a big function. revenue generator or something. It's, it's really not. So, mm. And that's something that we can Thank look at. People in your area. How many people yeah. take advantage of that, <laughs> Don't in, uh, say, in a year? I don't know number of people, but they do stay pretty busy with um, – I mean, they, they, they stay booked pretty solid when we're open as far as appointments go. And I'm not sure how many – I'd have to go back. This has been kind of back and forth. We've changed um, who's in charge down there recently, and we're kind of going through a transition period. Um, and that's happening at the same time that this delay in service is happening. So we got yeah, some you bugs. you mind letting me know. we got some bugs is. to work out. But, yeah, I can give you I can give you a number. And we, and we can't charge an additional fee for offering that service? I – I'll have to do some checking. I don't know what the statute is. I think we should, okay. because it is a convenience. If it's, if it's legal. We do. Um, it's like the facility fee. It's five additional dollars to go down to the annex to do your tags. And then so what's it cost to do your tags and pay your taxes there, the additional? Uh, taxes, there's, well, you can answer it. Um, well, the, the, the additional fee that we get is $5, and there's more fees than that that we get, but I don't have them in front of me right now. I don't have them memorized. But, but nothing on taxes. Okay, but right. but um, we are charging the maximum we can on driver's license renewals? Yeah, as far as I believe uh, we are. There was discussion had that we, prior to we looked at increasing that fee. It, was, it used to be less than $5, and it went up to 5 We also tried to charge for out-of-county versus in-county. There was a, a discrepancy in those fees, too. One out-of-county was higher than in-county. Um, but that was not allowed. So the $5 might be able to go up. I don't know. If, if you do 10 price. people, that's $50. Wow. So, that's, so there could be people from other counties coming in to no, use our facilities to renew their driver's license? You can, driver's license is not based off of the county. Right. So yeah. I can go to Douglas yeah. County and do yeah. it just like yeah. somebody from Douglas yeah. County. But you're going to a state yeah. office to do yes. that. Yeah. But it is allowed. Yeah. Right. No, you can do that. I understand that. Right. But when the county, when taxpayers love our county are subsidizing this, I just got a real problem with other county residents coming to use our facility. So the five dollars you think might be allowed to go up? That's a I, I believe that's statutory cap. Uh, we they can look into it, but it, it's we can look at. I know it, we went to five dollars on one of them. That was the maximum we could go. But. For the county service fee, for like renewals, five dollars was the max. Right. But I don't know if it was for driver's license. Driver's license always had an additional fee. Prior to even the facility fee going into effect. Yeah, if you can increase the fee to cover your costs. You can provide a really convenience fee for being able to do it there rather than having to come here and go to Lawrence. It would be, interesting. Pay, uh, yeah. Yeah. It'd be yeah. interesting to see if how how popular that stays now that you can renew your driver's license up via an app on your phone. Right, so. right. Well, I'm sure it's better than going to the Department of Motor Vehicle. That, that's a nice right. feature they just... I don't know when they started, but I know Sounds I took good advantage to of it this year. <laughs> How do they do your picture but photographs? I can't believe you all have. You just the same, same one that you had? I can believe yeah, it. You just have to have proof that you had an a, a, a eye test in the last year or whatever. So, yeah, pretty pretty handy. And, and we, well, Caleb, while you're here, just sure. because uh, Caleb and I had a conversation a, a couple of weeks ago, and because it's campaign season and there's all kinds of crazy stuff like that out there. I just wanted to, while you're here, take an opportunity to address. We talked about this. There was some rumor out there that, about uh, some statements that were credited to me, apparently, um, uh, allegedly, uh, about uh, me referring to Caleb's uh, employees as minions. And he and I discussed that. And obviously, that is not true. That did not happen. So I've been dealing with these that. issues for about four or five months now. And it is, it's all just slander. So it's just campaign season slander. Yeah. Campaign issues. So if, you, if any of that comes back to you, I just wanted to let you know that didn't happen. It's been Not clarified. For our employees that way. Right. I can't imagine anybody would. So. Thanks, Caleb. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next Thanks, Caleb. Minions like the little yellow guys? 
I guess, yeah. Is there another is there another thing? <laughs> minions means? I just it's it's like if you're a king, your minions are your servants. Oh, I guess yeah. I just the only time I ever heard minions was a little What's yellow. Watch it in the green kids. <laughs> yeah. That's the only time I ever heard the word. Oh yeah. My grandkids. <laughs> hmm. Sheriff's department. Oh, not nice. here. We're we're heading. Well, we we'll I'm gonna see if we can get David to come in and do his budget. Oh yeah. It's the second to the end and Oh, that'd be easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm with you. We could be OCC if we had to. Yeah, that's me. I'm here last anyway, so I figure that's, we'll save it. But if I'm sure he's here and it won't take very long to go over his budget. You want me to go get him? Um, I asked him. I think he should be coming. You just want to go up and grab something to eat again. Grab a piece of pizza. Doug, I'm going to miss your comments. <laughs> Just thinking out loud. <laughs> uh. Commissioner, I'd, I'd like to thank you for approving both my budget and the budget for the county coroner. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Apologize in advance, David. One thing I wanted to point out, Commissioners, um, in uh, David's budget, we have moved um, a couple of the contractual obligations that we have that were considered previously. They were in the outside agency. We moved them into um, county, county council just because they're, we're contractually obligated to them, so we moved it into his. Uh, uh, Casa is what I'm referring to. This. Gotcha. Commissioners, uh, you've been briefed on this. Mark's reviewed the budget. County clerks reviewed the budget, and I appreciate their help. I would just basically say this. With respect to the coroner's budget and the largest component of my budget, they are mandates from the state that we have little to no control over. We are required by law to provide attorneys in certain cases. We are required by law to pay our coroner for various costs associated with autopsies. The costs of the coroner's services have Quite frankly, they're I'll term it out of control. Uh, we're getting cost increases uh, quarterly. Uh, the number of autopsies being performed has increased dramatically. I am looking into options that the county might be able to utilize with respect to coroner's services, but they're very, very limited. With respect to the court appointed attorneys, on July 19th, uh, Misty and I will be meeting along with Mr. Crossland with Mr. Matt Keenan, uh, the Director of Kansas Legal Services, to determine what offer they may be able to make to the county to provide attorneys for these cases on a set uh, price that would allow greater control of the budget. But a lot of the costs that uh, come out of my department and the coroner's department are out of your control. They're out of my control. So you said earlier that these are mandates. I'd like to refer to them as unfunded mandates. Well, yeah, we do not receive compensation from or reimbursement from the state uh, for either department. Mm -hmm. So in the past, we've treated costs as an outside agency, so now it's just rolled into your budget? Just moved it over. I, uh, after discussing it with the uh, Chief Justice, it is obligated. We are obligated to provide it. It's not mm -hmm. an optional service, so... Rather than put it as an outside request, I'm just moved into, similar to the um, appointed. Uh, okay. Okay. Commissioners, I would say this: Chief Judge Loudon has been very uh, vigilant in trying to identify ways to one provide the attorney services that we are required to do so under law. Secondly, to uh, look at various options that are available to the courts in the county regarding cost control. So, this is not an issue where the district court has just decide to send us bills that we have to pay. They're very cognizant of the budgetary limitations the county has, and they're cognizant of the fact that we are required to provide those attorneys. But we are working on it. Yeah. So we're mandated to fund CASA, but what is the level of funding we're mandated to maintain? Well, probably 95% of CASA is funded through private fundraising and other grants through the state. 70000 that they bill us for. Um, it's, it's similar to 
any other service. That's what they're saying, that they will provide that contractual service for, for a fee. It's not like an hourly rate or something. So if, if they came in and said it's going to be $100,000 um, or $200,000, we would obviously have to consider if there were other options available. But as long as it's... It's sort of like our, uh, our mental health system. It's, it's almost exactly like that. Is what it is. Yep. It's a mandate. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. So you're about four hundred dollars from being revenue neutral. Next, sheriff's department. Come on down, sheriff. Come on down. Join the fun. trust that everybody's had the opportunity to review what's been submitted. Um, what has been submitted is a minor increase over 2024 approved budget, uh, an increase of $160,579. As you go through the narrative, um, I would hope that you would notice several uh, line items with decreases, uh, and that has been throughout the entire budget. Um, the Probably the one item that needs additional, uh, well, to, to, I guess just to bring to the attention is the uh, increase in uh, radio maintenance, tower maintenance, um, which is reflected in, in this total increase of 160579 uh, we are waiting for uh, Chuck to arrive as well. He was out of the office when we got the call to come over a little bit early because uh, he has some additional information on uh, some of the issues that we are uh, encountering with not only the 911 funds but uh, provided maintenance and service to the radio towers. Sure, if I got one on you, I couldn't ask you. Um, one I was looking at is a 0015, so 0728, uh, the increase of 43,000 on service contracts. Is there a reason, and maybe you've already said it, I'm sorry if I didn't hear it, is there a reason that jumps so much? On uh, service contracts? Yeah. A lot of it is um, things that are out of our control. Uh, vendors raising rates uh, for services that are needed that they provide. In other words, cost of doing everyday business is just going up. I'm sorry? Cost of doing everyday business is going up. Yeah, so some of the items uh, labeled, um, obviously, you know, our copier machines, uh, printers that we use every day, uh, storage, uh, some of the investigative equipment uh, that we use, um, and then just other, other services that help support the function of the office. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Commissioners, um, the sheriff pointed out that there's some money added in here for maintenance on the towers. Just wanted to make sure you understand that's about $150,000, right? yes. $100,000. So um, while his budget reflects an increase of about $160,000, 150 of that is that maintenance on those uh, towers. And um, I think that's also why Chuck's here, is to reinforce that what's happening is um, 911 used to take care of a lot of that. But oh, that's right. That's right. Now. That's right. We'll use these instead of our pots that we learned about earlier. Yeah. The pots lines. Um, the, the revenue coming in just isn't keeping up with yeah. the amount of maintenance. Yeah. And honestly, there's a lot of deferred maintenance there that um, it, it should be more. We've talked about this. It probably should be much more than 150000 but this is a start. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. So on 
that. On you that. got a million dollars you can give us, Andy? <laughs> we're asking everybody. We're just, I just wanted to ask. We're asking every department. On the radio issue, is that something that is uh, you feel like like if we were in a pinch, is that something we could push back a year, or just that's something that's high, high priority? Well, so the the the, the radio system, and I'll just kind of go back a little bit in time. Two thousand eight. Uh, a countywide tax was passed to fund a $12 million radio infrastructure. Um, it's seven towers uh, in the system, four that are owned by Leavenworth County, three that are KDOT. Um, prior to about two years ago, KDOT, in appreciation for Leavenworth County, partnering with them to help establish this radio system, uh, covered a lot of the daily expenses or the, the annual expenses and that type of thing. Um, as they built their system out, um, understandably, they become reluctant to help help us with our, our expenses. So uh, the checkbook closed in, in that regard, so we became responsible for a lot of those uh, expenses. Um, the system is used from everything from law enforcement, every agency in the county, every fire agency in the county, EMS, um, when we have highway patrol in the county, fish and game, County shop, council on agent, these are all users of the system. And so if it goes down, it's not affecting just a, a segment. It's going to affect everybody. The um, Where we're running in now is the system is, what, since 2008, 23? Yeah. To, to illustrate years. that, if you right. bought a house in 2008, you start to see some infrastructure failures within that house. You start to see air conditioner problems. There's two wall hanger air conditioners on each one of those sites. They're starting to age out, and the type of air conditioners that are on them are no longer allowable by federal standards as far as the refrigerant that's used in them. So we're having to change those out as they die. There's you know, a planned obsolescence within that. There are other components within the uh, tower system itself that after since that 2008 date have been sitting there and they've been aging out and we're starting to see those uh, the maintenance issues like taking care of an old car or an old house you can pay me now or pay me later and somewhere down the line that figure is going to be higher if you don't do the maintenance as things go on so there are certain components that if uh, for instance if you did have an air conditioner there's two of them there for redundancy a slave and a master so to speak and those two work off of each other. If one fails, the other one's covering it. Well, now, if one goes down, you're stuck. If you have an issue, say, today, when it's 95 degrees, you'll have a high heat issue, and that's going to destroy batteries within the UPS system within a very short time period, and that radio equipment's going to attempt to keep to run, and you'll start to have failures within those battery components. They're dependent mm -hmm. upon conditions, the yeah. environmental conditions inside yeah. of the mm -hmm. structure. So, yeah. Like I say, not dissimilar to a house. All those components have to work together or you, you're going to have bad things happen. Yes. And we're finding that there's there are components to these power systems that we weren't even aware of. Uh, but when they fail, they're like, okay, something we probably should all know about. But... Um, to, to delay maintenance, I think you're inviting uh, problems, uh, and we're some of these things that. are... We know all about that, Andy. If it, <laughs> if it, yeah, if it, if it fails, that. it fails, and then uh, we're we're stuck in the... Uh, in the so the answer is no, we can't, probably yeah. shouldn't defer that. It would be my recommendation not to. And we had a dehydrator go It's like, can sure. you, but should you? Second question, you've got eight, eight of these positions, additional positions. Are you going to be able to hire those? So, um, and are those mainly deputies? So, as we sit right now today, I have one detention spot that's vacant. Uh, as far as that goes, I've got four applicants that we are looking at. Um, one will test tomorrow. One is waiting for a final interview, and two are in background. So, three of the four, as we sit, look very positive. So, one detention, one nurse. Uh, we just had Chad Sandberg retire. Uh, he was security. So yeah. that leaves a, a vacancy in security, which we're, we're scrambling to cover that on a daily basis. Uh, one dispatcher, 
and two detectives and three patrol officers. If we're fortunate and are able to hire the three of the four um, current applicants, not only does that address the detention issue, that allows movement from those in the jail who are ready to transition to a patrol spot, uh, which will leave one vacancy there uh, in, in patrol. So the, 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 the art of this is it's always a moving thing. Um, you know, if, if I had eight positions up in the last year, it probably was not the same eight positions. Uh, it, it, it's, it's constantly moving. Um, you know, overall, we have about a 7% vacancy rate of 121 positions, which, in talking to counterparts, not only across the, the metro region, but across the state, uh, again, we're, we're all kind of in that same boat. Um, we've, we've had times in the last probably three months where we were within striking distance of having, you know, four or th three or four vacancies. Um, you know, and what's happened here is we have a young, young man working in the jail who um, delayed going to school after graduation. Uh, we hired him. Um, he applied for a ROTC scholarship, given a full ride to Wichita State, has to leave the area. Um, but certainly we don't want to stand in the way for, for him to, to advance. Yeah. Uh, another individual has, has left to go to work at USP in a non-custodial situation to help pursue what she finds interesting, what her career choices are. And I think it probably helps with the fact that she has a very young family and uh, she won't be confronted with shift work on a daily basis. So that's an illustration of what we're seeing when, when people are leaving, um, in addition to the, the inability to, to compete with local agencies pay-wise. Uh, our starting salary, our starting an hourly rate uh, for a detention officer is $20.35. They can go down to Lansing Correctional Facility, even with all the problems they have, you know, they can hire on today for over $26 an hour. They can go a little bit further down to Lawrence in Douglas County and hire on for 27 and some change per hour. Uh, so that is what we are contending with. Those are agencies that we, we lose people to. We lose people to the Johnson County agencies. Um, so we continue to try to provide the best environment, best product that we can. Uh, about the only place that we cannot compete right now is, is with salary, and, and we know budgets are tight and you know, dollars are being stretched, but that is something that we have got to, uh, in the future, um, I guess, address more seriously instead of kicking it down the road. Um, your animal control is being reduced by a 1,000. Is there a, a reasoning for that, or is it? are you able to coordinate with some other cities, or what's the... Which... Uh, which line I'm looking on that? It was animal control at uh, uh, $1,000 reduction. Yeah, $1,000 reduction. I just wonder what Chris will thought about that. 253. <laughs> yeah. So this is not uh, this is not what we pay Crystal. Uh, that's another that whole another story there. This is for the cost that we take up an animal. Uh, we have um, a dog or a raccoon that bites somebody. Paying for the services of taking them up, taking them to the vet, having having the head removed, sending them off for testing, and that type of thing. We've seen a reduction in uh, calls for service in that nature, uh, so we felt comfortable in, in reducing it. Okay. So the if if you reimburse uh, Humane Society, that comes from a different yes, yeah, that's, pool that's, money. Yes. And, and that line actually increased, I think, two thousand dollars to keep in. in Pace with the with what the contract states that we'll do. Um, nowhere is it in line with what she would like to have, but um, I think there was a five percent increase for the contract. Well, I'd just like to thank you for this budget because this is a very uh, tight. We're in a really tight budget year, and you really produced a tight budget. Yeah, Sharpen our pencils. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you did. I got a question. It might be for Chuck. Um, you know, when you get your cell phone bill and there's a 911 fee on there, is, is there a way for the counties to increase that or add a fee to help pay for things like the towers and the... Yeah, Commissioner, that is a uh, state statute. State statute sets it at 90 cents. And it's 90 cents for whether you have a hardwire or cell phone. Uh, 
Um, our biggest problem, like uh, the administrator said, is that we're losing, and I'm going to put this into perspective, uh, the county has a switch, if you will, for VoIP phones. Well, that's only charged on four different lines, but how many lines do we have within the county? So we lose that 90 cents on each one of those lines. Yep. We're seeing that more and more as businesses yep. come on to play. That's exactly. So there's no way we can do that unless we change it on the legislation side of it. Okay. Every Not year we put in a budget of showing what well, not a budget, but an audit that uh, I get audited twice a year. And uh, that audit shows what our shortfalls are. And we show that, hey, we're putting a whole bunch more money in here than what we're actually receiving. So I just wanted to. Yeah. So, so it would take so a legislation again, act to. Again, it's a state problem. So are we asking for funding? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I thought, but yeah. I didn't we know. That's an it, underfunded yeah. mandate. Yeah. We used to be able to sustain right. the 911 system, yeah. and it's nowhere even close now. We, we are extremely short. Yeah, those days and, are gone. Uh, got documentation from 2019 down to what we have, what we brought in this year, and it's nowhere even close. If they just set that up right, it should be a cash cow to help pay for things. But unless they fix it in Topeka, it's not. That's it's, right. it's going the opposite way. Because who has a, who has landline anymore? Decades, so we'll yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. And I used to come, and we used to be able to set our own tariff mm -hmm. up to a certain point. Yeah, and uh, that's when the state took that away from us. <coughs> We're saying now, surprise, surprise, surprise. It's like cents is as high as you can go. Yeah, used that's. To, I think we'd go to like yeah. which went a lot further back. One then. phone on the yeah. one phone on the yeah, yeah. You have five right. phones on the account, <coughs> and only one is paying. The yeah. That's exactly where I was going. With. I remember so, uh, when the family when the family plan started. They didn't take that into account. No. Yeah. Okay. So we're going back to radios and towers. You know, back in uh, that was a sales tax that paid for all this stuff. And I know Public Works at the time when the this 20-year sales tax was coming up, we tried to say, hey, can we put on the sales tax about maintenance for County Road 1, being sales tax paid for it, sales tax needs to maintain it and go forward, and that should have something that may have should have been on there, including the radios in the tower. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't the say comments that. comments that uh, we received about radio maintenance at towers, at the towers, by the time they need maintenance, they won't even exist. There'll be satellites in the sky and all that. But that was nobody that had any expertise in it that said that. Uh, it sounded good, mm -hmm. but by you know the sales tax paying for all this, you know it's just going to increase the county's budgets to maintain all this stuff, and it's not going to get any cheaper to maintain. Yep. Well, and I think it's so. fair to say that we've recognized that when we when we started this program and uh, you know had had the system up and running, that there's going to be cost involved in mm -hmm. replacement and upkeep, and I know at least three times, perhaps four times that. We approached the the, the sit and board at that time to ask for depreciation for for the system. I mean, it's a twelve million dollars system, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it was denied each and every time. Um, and I, so we've we've lived off of the existing or the, the remaining tax uh, that was there. And I think we extinguished that a couple years mm -hmm. ago, uh, which adds to uh, right. the financial burden that we currently are under. It's no different than the Justice Center roof not being put on depreciation. Mm -hmm. And to kind of put it into perspective, in 2019, we had $584,000 worth of starting cash. Now, we were $500,000 less than that now because of the bills that we have to pay out mm -hmm. on a daily basis. <coughs> so now my starting cash in 2024 was $96,000. So you can see that it's just... You can weigh your reserves. Yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing left. Yeah. So an, another piece of this is um, those funds uh, are paid in per piece app, correct? Correct. Okay, so in Leverett County, there are three piece apps, public safety at turn points, where you have all 911 is going to be answered. Fort Leavenworth, they're standalone, and uh, the proceeds that they get go back to Big Army somehow. Yep. The other two are the Leavenworth Police Department and us, Sheriff's Office. We happen to be in the same room. Justice Center. We've had some difficulties with with the city, and, and I can't say that I don't disagree with them to some um, extent. That they feel that 
because they are a piece app, the, the arrangement we had was splitting the cost 40%, 60%. County being 60% of the cost means we're the larger user. Um, and every year we do a, uh, a study, um, not a scientific study, but simply based on push to talks. Every time a user keys the mic, it makes a count. Um, and that indicates roughly, well, actually not roughly, it indicates the city of Leavenworth, consistent of their public works, police department, and fire department, account for 20% of the total usage. So I think rightfully so, they, they question why are we paying for 40% when we're only using 20%. Um, so I think there needs to, we need to visit this as a group to identify uh, where we go from here because it's becoming increasingly difficult to receive um, payment for the invoices that we submit to the city of Leavenworth. Uh, they're looking for some resolution, um, which I can't give them because I think it's going to have to be a, a decision by the board on how, how we address it moving forward. Okay. So I think what, the, what we're talking about there is that if we're going to break it out by the users, that the other users who currently are on the system who pay nothing are going to have to pick up their share of this increase. That, that it's either we levy a tax at the county to take care of it or these places start paying their share of it. And that, that's the conversation that has to be had. That seems reasonable. And, you know, and so how soon will these conversations take place? So I had a, a preliminary one with the city of Lansing. I'm sorry, not the city of Lansing, city of Tonganoxie and city of Baser. Uh, and I don't think that uh, that concept is rejected outside of the fact that they feel that everybody should, every user should pay. So that, that includes townships. And we know that you know, some townships are are flush with money and, and some are you know, mm -hmm. bringing their own gas to the fire trucks to, to keep them keep them going. So what is fair and equitable, again, I think we, just, we need to discuss that and identify where we go from here. Because it's something that we cannot sustain as it is. No, no. Okay. Well, while we're talking about that, um, I think this year we are running short in the nine month funds. Correct. And so I believe there was an amount you were going, you wanted to ask um, the commission to consider contributing this year, which would be an amendment to our budget to transfer money into the nine month funds. I'm, I'm asking the board, <clears throat> because I'm for seeing expenses between now and December 31st. Um, I put it in my budget last year in, in the the uh, narrative that uh, just to sustain, I'm going to need $250,000 worth of additional funding to pay just the 911 um, payments. Going into 2025, I'm going to need to have about $350,000 to work on that dollar amount just to sustain the bills. This is not buying any widgets or anything else, just like Major Shirley said. You know, it's, it's the repairs, and uh, we're, we're going to be faced with another dollar amount by 2031 that's going to cost us anywhere from 900 to $1.2 million. I say that last part again. 900000 to so $1.2 million. When, when is that going to be? 2031. We have to be ready to go with that. So we need to start working on our legislatures right now because it would take that long to get something passed. What kind of numbers make me want to call 911 right now? <laughs> anyway, uh, we're, we're uh, that is not in this budget. Uh, yeah. That is something new. Yep. So that's going to have to be prioritized from somewhere else in the budget. Or yep. the 250,000 for 2024 Ricky. has to be immediate. If I need to come before the board, Ricky. you know, on a regular agenda item, that, that would work. I, I kind of let the ball drop um, when we had a discussion amongst ourselves here about two weeks ago. Well, but, uh, we how is this that this just 
now is coming to our attention? It, it came because we had unforeseen payments. We had one was 161000 a contract with Motorola. Just through 2024, we tried putting it off and, and uh, seeing where we could come up with the funding. <coughs> and uh, the funds just were not generated. And we're contractually obligated to make those payments. That's correct. And Chuck did request that additional 250 After my last year's budget. Was removed. Okay. Let's just deal. keep coming. No, don't ask me any more questions. <laughs> I don't think we can afford it. I do have a written short brief here if you gentlemen and ladies would like to, to look at it and give one to uh, yeah, uh, sales tax money be used for that. Well, that might be a suggestion, Commissioner, is that that's everybody what I was, gets that's taxed what I was on it if we look at a yes, uh, sales, uh, sales tax money can be used for. <clears throat> Revenue to the county. Any anything that's taken out of roads, though. Yeah, we're already right. put it in a radius. It's coming off. Yeah, the road, we're already. Yeah. Just to be clear. Yeah. But that's what I was getting at. I mean, the sales tax paid for all these things, and then it all of a sudden it's dumped on us to maintain it. And just the county road one road alone, what it does to the road and bridge budget to have to maintain or redo that road and it's already been redone once and it was a million bucks. Right. Well, nine hundred and some thousand dollars. Yeah, and that, that wasn't a, and that wasn't a very good job either. I mean, it <laughs> needed to have a, a mill and overlay yeah. and we did a recycle in place and that was abandoned. And it's coming again. I mean, how you were here then. Remember that? They did it and it was cracked within yep. two weeks. It was yep. bad. Every 20 foot had a crack. But, but if we would have had sales tax, if it would have been on this 20 year sales tax, it is a portion of that for maintenance of that project and on the radios and the towers, we wouldn't be having all these catastrophic expenses. I think it goes back to what the sheriff said, and that is amortizing, setting aside, depreciating, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. budgeting for the replacement when you buy it. Exactly. So when we buy a truck, we start budgeting to replace it in 10 years or whatever the cycle is. Right away. Yeah, it's be 34. We have money. That wasn't done in this case. They took the money, they, they paid for the towers and everything, and there was no money set aside to replace it. Right. Not, no rainy day it, it's, it's a, it's it's a always conscious good decision that was made, but now we're at that point where the other decision is going to have to be made. <coughs> so now it's time to pay, pay for repairs and upkeep. How do you want to handle that? So we, it could come out of the sales tax, but I think that's, then that's going to come out. I'm of understanding that 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 reduces what's available to go towards roads. Yeah, right. but, but but this was expended. Um, you know, when we build infrastructure, uh, whether or not nice. they whether or not they assumed we were going to maintain it, we have the responsibility to maintain it. Yes. So, uh, and we certainly don't have the money in the in the budget mm -hmm. right now. And the people that made that decision back then don't have the responsibility of maintaining it now. It's on us. Well, we can have uh, Chuck come in on a regular agenda item, and you can give direction on where you'd like the money this year and next year to come from. Well, it has to come from something. We've got to do it. And, and, and same thing with our dust abatement roads. Uh, I mean, we have dust abatement roads, but... You know that adds more maintenance, yes. and if we don't have a plan for that, I mean that, that's something I think we need to really. That's not on the sheriff for the focus on. No. It's the hundred fifty thousand. One problem at a one problem at a time. Yep. No, that goes towards the um, repair replacement of uh, the equipment of the towers, but not towards these ongoing bills that you talked about. So no. it doesn't help offset the no. three hundred. Well, when there were some monies that were expended on radios that came out of a carryover, right? What was that? That was some radio expense. We, up, we upgraded the, the portable and mobile radios in use by my office. And last year. Yeah, yeah. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. So, well, there's a lot of radio expense. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But, like we said earlier, mortgage filing fees. 
and LAVPR, we'd be able to cover all these expenses and still lower the mill levy. So, make sure you thank your legislature. Seven years ago, we talked about if we're going to provide a service, it, you're committed. If you're going to commit to provide that service, you have to do it the right way. Right. Um, and we were at that time. We were actually talking about the council on aging because they had vehicles that were rusted completely through. So, at that time, the board said yes, we want to continue to provide that service. We started replacing the equipment, and now it's on a schedule. In this case, we're mandated to provide the service. It's not whether we want to or not. It's a service that has to be provided. Um, it, it's you're not. It's not an option to not fund it. The question is how you fund it. The fees used to take care of it, and they don't. But they don't anymore. Uh, They're not I keeping would, up. I would make an argument that there needs to be a levy specifically assigned to this, so we know that's exactly what it's going for. It's not just a general fund transfer in, um, or. Know, if, if there could get a special sales tax approved to fund 911, that would be ideal. That takes legislation. And exactly. Like said, that's a, that's a pretty good process at a minimum, probably. That'd be on the fast track. Well. Yeah. Uh, and unless it has anything to do with the star bonds. Star bonds. Can we do star bonds? Well, they can do that then? overnight. <laughs> Boom, done. So anyways, we'll have Chuck come in on a regular agenda item to discuss this a little further. Um, mm. and, uh, well, it sounds like it's a, it has to be done, right. period. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's the uh, 350000 that's for next year is going to have to be... Well, how are we deciding we're going to address it this year? Yeah. We'll then also identify how we're going to take care of it next year, too. Yep. So. Just wanted to make sure that you were, he was here so you could hear that. Yeah, we didn't like it. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't like it either. Your budget is presented as a, a flat levy, but you've but seen that. And I think we got to got to remember this on all these roads that we build with sales tax money. But like there 147th are, there Street. Yeah, it's, there's a, it's a super two. Our road department plan. does not budget to maintain a road like that. But there's we have no to. way there's money in the budget for that. Right now we're not budgeting. Well, there should have been. Uh, all the roads yeah. Right. So I'm saying it may, we may have to use sales tax money Ever? Yes. to build <laughs> these roads, here. to maintain these roads. And, and being since it's a 20-year sales tax, there's no reason why we can't. Because of that. 147. <laughs> no, there isn't any reason why we can't use the sales tax other than we then need to amend our CIP. And what we said earlier is stop paving new roads when we can't maintain the roads we well, have. When we get uh, the battery plant overflow and the Royals and the Chiefs here, we'll have all this revenue coming in. <laughs> the state will figure out a way to take that, too. Yeah, I know. Well, speaking of, of revenue, just uh, for full transparency, and I learned about this yesterday, um, the, the revenue we generate, which is not a, a gigantic amount for um, inmate services, uh, in particular inmate phones, um, and uh, video visitation. There is an effort underway by FCC to um, essentially set a, set a limit on what facilities can charge, um, which would e essentially negate any profit by the, by the, by the facility. Um, and so um, the, the National Service Association is, is watching this closely, and um, I think they're their intention is to file a suit in case this uh, rule does come into effect uh, because this is a, a interstate issue that the federal government's trying to um, dictate how it happens. But not a not a great revenue generator, but the fact is that it may be affected to some rate next year. Start writing letters. Do we have any information, new updated information on this uh, uh, core civic or the migrant issue there? I haven't heard uh, anything in, in a couple months. Uh, last time I did speak with anybody, it was a representative out of Senator Marshall's office um, who said it. Uh, his understanding was that it's still very much in play that you know the federal government can at any time say, well, we're going to contract with the core civic and, and make it happen. But uh, he has promised to Keep me in the loop if he hears anything. I haven't heard anything recently. So. Yeah, 
My understanding was that if, if, we, if they didn't contract through a local government, that the process took longer. That was the... Well, we're monitoring that. Lots of people are concerned. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else for the sheriff? I don't know. Anything. I've heard Thank you. Thank Thank you. Sheriff. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. fellas. Thanks for coming. Just in time, Todd. Early? Yep. We're running a little early. We're keeping the trains running early today. Ah. <sighs> when you are, Todd. Um, well, our proposal was pretty much what we initially sent over was just trying to keep within the exactity of the budget that we were going to have. I did prepare and draft a request due to the fact of uh, our neighboring counties and, and its salaries that we're seeing for attorneys across the state, much less the depletion that we were se uh, seeing and hardships that we're seeing in hiring an additional attorney. We've had a, an attorney position pretty much open for almost two years. Um, we have had that filled for maybe roughly four months. Uh, one month was a uh, where one attorney was actually leaving the office and another attorney uh, became hired. And then um, the other time was we had one attorney for a very short, almost three-month period of time before they went on to a different uh, profession. And I discussed that within my uh, presentation. Uh, all of my attorneys wanted and wished to be here. I will tell you, all of them are in court right now. Two of them are doing a criminal sodomy case of a 14-year-old trial that's going to go four days. The rest of them are trying to man... Uh, multiple courtrooms at the same time, and in fact, one is covering for me so I could be here. Um, these, uh, the discrepancy that might have happened within the budget is basically an attorney's salary, and we have not filled that position, but I'm still hoping that we can, so we can actually give a little bit of room. Uh, as described, if there are attorneys all in the courtroom, there's no one actually downstairs, filing anything that might become emergencies until they can actually get downstairs. And so for the fact of preparation, for the best interest of the office, for ethics, uh, legally ethics, and we need not only the additional funding, but that position so my attorneys can have the freedoms to be able to prepare, file, and go forward with trials. Stand for any questions. Any questions for Todd? On the board? No, I, I don't. have a question. Go ahead. Yes, um, it is. Thanks for coming over. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate everything your office does. Uh, when we're talking about the uh, additional judge, I know in your letter you talked Correct. about the additional judge. Could you kind of outline why that additional judge position is adding pressure to your staff? Sure, sure. So the additional position of the judge ended up being within the criminal uh, docket. So that makes now, instead of having one criminal judge, we have two criminal judges. The additional criminal judge is handling mainly uh, a drug docket and a traffic docket. Uh, with doing that, now we have two courtrooms going on at the same time. What we're seeing is that um, if you're not familiar with these type of dockets besides trial, we have attorneys that have to wait for each one of their cases while they sit up there. Now, they're all doing work while they're sitting in court, but it's, they're also negotiating, talking to other attorneys, and they don't have the blessings of being able to sit in their own office and do work. 
when you have multiple courtrooms going on at the same time, at, in, on Wednesday, sometimes we have three, if not four courtrooms where I have attorneys in every single courtroom, that eliminates anybody from being downstairs to do any other work that needs to be done. Having the additional court speeds up uh, the process in which uh, the justice system works, which is a great benefit, but when you add that speed, then you actually have to have the person power to be able to handle that. So when they added an additional judge, uh, as, as you saw and I indicated, as well as I uh, presented some articles that you could do research, the other jurisdictions, including ours, added additional positions or maintained additional positions to be able to handle the surplus of work that the judge causes. Has your criminal caseload uh, increased in the last two years? Increased? Uh, no. It's, I think it's fairly, is maintained fairly consistent. Uh, we've seen uh, a downturn in crime over the past five years. We did see a small uptick this year, but for the most part, not a significant amount. Uh, what we did see over the course with through COVID was a backlog. We were able to get caught up with the ability when we did have the additional attorney and we also had an additional part-time attorney that helped us uh, move faster within the filing process. Obviously, when you file more cases, then you have more court uh, that you have to do. Uh, and we are still going through that trend. And uh, until we can get a replacement attorney to help out, uh, we're trying to keep up with the backlog that is accumulating. And, and just one last question. Uh, you had uh, mentioned in the letter about the two uh, computer systems Correct. that your staff is being required to interface. Can you kind of reflect on that? And is that, gonna, is that problem going to go away? Or is, that gonna, is, that, is, that, is there a way to solve that problem? You would need to talk to the Kansas Supreme Court regarding that. That is an <laughs> ongoing situation. I know that uh, this year's legislature has implemented a new, for lack of a better word, IT um, secretary or whatever. I, there's a specific title for it. I'm sure you might have heard about it. Uh, but that is supposed to be help implement any type of issues that we had, as everybody's aware, or if you're not aware, uh, our court system uh, got attacked by hackers that had our system down from uh, September to what, February? March. Oh. March. Um, and which put us back into uh, a period where we're hand filing everything, which caused even more troubles. Um, we have been promised since last year, and you might remember that in the conversation, that the programs that prosecutors are using are supposed to integrate with the programs that the state is using. And even the, even the justices, when I have talked to them privately, recommend that we use a different system than the one the statewide is for, for prosecutors' offices. Um, that at some point they're supposed to integrate. That is still yet to occur. Uh, we're still waiting for that to occur. Um, and so I don't know when that would happen. So, um, so that affects our staffing level for the administrative yes, department. Yes, I am not holding my breath. How's that? I mean, I've been promised That's a lot, good. and I have not <laughs> received anything. So, and um, we're, I, you know, Johnson County is about to be the last county to take on the statewide system. Uh, I think they take it on in November. It's called Odyssey. And I know I've been in constant communication with their prosecutor about issues and problems that they were having or what they're concerned about because even in the last, was that a, this month or the month prior where they had, uh, we had a substantial delay in being able to file something for some time, which has caused, yeah, that's what caused some problems. And I'm sorry, if I didn't introduce, this is Layla Graham and Lou Filbert. And behind you is? And Micah Bray. And J.D. Miller, but I don't. <laughs> so we know him. <laughs> you may not be the person to ask on this. Um, when they built the Justice Center in on the 96 sales tax, did they, did they build that to where it could be added on and they said we're going to have to add on in the future? Uh, do you remember anything like that? 
Yes. I might have been in high they school. Did. So. <laughs> the guy who I well, I was here, okay? <laughs> and I believe the Justice Center, they did not build it to the full-blown right. field because of money. Right. And that said that we can design it to where it yep. can be built on yep. as it's needed. And I just wonder, are we getting close to having to have that conversation? About adding on? Yeah. I will tell you, related to Commissioner Stevens' question about the judge, um, they built that with the idea that they would have five judicial offices. The fifth one was to, does not have a jury room in it. I will tell you that our, our fifth judge is um, floating, and so he could be in courtroom two, he could be in courtroom three, he could be in courtroom five. Um, he has no designated space, so I'm, I'm not... I don't know if there's a plan to alleviate that or just a plan to let him continue floating. That seems to be the plan because that's what's going on yeah. with the building. I don't but know if I remember correctly, it, the, you know, this was the deal we built what they thought they was going to have the sales tax for, and they used every bit of that sales tax money for that, and that's what's helped pass these other sales tax. Now, 2006 to 2016 one, they did not. They did not fulfill all the promises. So, uh, I'm assuming since 1996 to now, it's probably getting about time that there may have to be an addition put on the Justice Center. That's just me personally. I don't know that. I'm just, just and, asking. And that's a good question to the sheriff. I, I, uh, I know he has remodeled most of his side of the office. Um, I, you know, for us, we, we still have room. So, I mean, it gets tight sometimes, but we, we still have some room. Um, I know that uh, uh, Ms. Van Houten took over the uh, juvenile correction facility. Yeah, right, the building right. and that yeah that's probably helped, yeah. But we didn't get that facility. I believe that's to the probation office got that community corrections building within there. So, I mean, there's been some ebb and flow with movement. Um, okay. Maybe we can hang on to... Ten years is up, so some of these businesses that got ten-year tax abatement can start paying some taxes. Then we'll be able to fund it. I don't have questions. I don't. Thank you, Todd. Todd, can I want to just clarify something um, in your letter for the uh, the full amount of the rate, the increases that you would like to include is eighty-eight thousand four hundred forty-five dollars, um, but there's also the matter of one hundred nineteen thousand. I just want to make sure. Right. Those two combined, that would be the fully funding. Let me find. Um, I went off the 2024 uh, increase with the uh, the 106, uh, 134 would be the increase um, with the idea that there could be a possible uh, 82. Uh, 82,443 as the alternative. Uh, obviously, our hope would be that of the more, but understanding that we're trying to have a tighter budget. I, um, and I provided you all the numbers so you guys can look to see what other offices are being paid and what they are. I know it's a little bit difficult for the staffing, but if you can give a fair range of what attorneys are starting for versus what attorneys uh, with the level of experience that I have uh, should be uh, paid. Uh, uh, I believe that the 15% increase is, is probably it's the fair. more accurate increase uh, to keep that comparable with uh, uh, other counties. I'll tell you, I had a conversation with one of our interns today. We're not paying these interns, so we're kind of blessed, but he wanted to go back to his home county of McPherson and they're paying their starting attorneys, or at least they're paying their attorneys at this point, 115000 uh, And when I was related to a conversation with Sedgwick County, they lost an attorney who was getting paid around 85000 uh, to another office for around 100000 just for an attorney with one year experience in their office to prosecute. Um, as you can, and if you do some search, Western Kansas is, you know, in the rural areas of Kansas, which, um, depending who you ask, we're considered rural, 
is have seen a depletion of attorneys. And so there is a fight uh, to keep those, and we, we continually have that. I continually have that fight. I know um, even in conversations, every single one of my attorneys has been propositioned to go to another office for something with more money. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't become too sweet of a deal to lose the experience that we have. What I'm trying to... I'm sorry, I'm the 100... What I'm trying to clarify was on the one page you say the you need to maintain the additional $119,000. Correct. And then for the 15% increase, you had 88445 so, so I need so to add those two. Add those that's, together. That's what I was Sorry. I'm saying. sorry, Mark. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, 119 is what we thought we should have had still in our budget, and that would be for the additional position for the interior. Yeah, those salaries look – I got a chance to look at them over the last few years. Those salaries look excuse me, kind of low. I mean, uh, it sounds like we're playing catch-up on that. Too, so. And I try to be conservative with the percentages compared, but I, I provided you the numbers of what it looks like to other candidates. I know. So, I, know. Um, I know we might not still be the same numbers of Johnson County, but as I tell anybody, we're not going to keep up with Johnson County, but we definitely need to be as good as other, other counties. Um, so you just make sure you have a really awesome work environment, right? That's what I try. That's what I try. That's not what they told me. Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> no, I think you're low. Oh, I think I'm sorry. I think I'm sorry is low. I really well, I've heard that you have a really great working environment for your for your employees, and that they're happy when they're there, and that's very important. And that's why there's a lot of long timers. Right. Yep. So that's very important. Very true. Very true. Okay. I go over there for the vending machines. They're way better than ours. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, too. <laughs> hey, play your cards right, you can get a free meal over there. <laughs> yeah. And you play your cards wrong. Again, again, any of you, any of you are, I, and I, Mike and I have I know. talked about it. Ricky Going back and forth. A few times, but any of you are welcome to come over to the office and see that uh, there's no one, everyone is busy. We're all busy right now. Um, I mean, of course, we would make, time to be able that you could meet and talk to each one of them, but they will all tell you about their busyness and um, and what they do for our county because, you know, <clears throat> they take very big pride, and I take very big pride of how safe we try to keep our community, and that's our primary uh, obligation, and that's uh, what we understand and why we think. I thought I'd, get, I'd tell you something. Um, one of the ways I look at your budget is what happens the year before and how the, the people that are deserving to be punished or being taken care of or how your office is interacting and getting them going. When I see Leavenworth County and I see a lot of people that have done some really terrible things being handled the way appropriate, in my opinion, then that reassures me that I need to support that budget. I really look at that. Now, if we were over there and they were burning the streets down and you guys were letting them out like some states on the East Coast and West Coast, I'd have a real tough time giving you a dime. But that's not what I see. I see that you're trying to handle and make people responsible for their consequences and then try to hopefully down the line make them a better person. So that's what I look at a lot on your budget. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, we've we made strong efforts not only to prosecute but also educate the community, and that's been a big push. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to have the Veterans Treatment Court uh, with the grant yep. from uh, Senator Moran. Uh, and if that can help out more people, then, uh, you know, God bless, because, you know, we're trying to help out definitely the community. That we're yeah, it goes, it's just two hands. That's right. Well, i got to have a break. I've had enough. You guys go ahead. Without me. Thank you. Nice Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you all. We have EMS down at 2.15. You guys need a break, five-minute break, or? We're all here ready. They're all here ready. Yeah. Need a water. Come on up, Jamie. Yeah. No, but I can go get it for you. No, no, no. He needs to walk. I got to walk. He's going to get no exercise. Otherwise, he's going to get all oh, beat up. Her. He starts locking <laughs> up. You know, <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we plan. We'll have to go get the two mics. Yeah. I thought 
we females were supposed to be the ones with the bladders. <laughs> After that childbirth stuff, you know. Whoa. That's what I'm, I just. <laughs> uh oh. Old and decrepit. It's what happens when you get to be that age. Everybody's leaving. You don't get to be the young. Well, now we don't have a form. <laughs> There's poor Jamie. Did you like my email reminding everyone which meeting to come to this week? Just a reminder. See you Thursday. I didn't need <laughs> I didn't need that. The amount of people who do need it though, and they're okay. all <laughs> you mean yeah, the numbers don't say the bottom of this issue. No. Okay. So, no, I'm good. I will stick it in her thing. You? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, if we can rush these guys through really fast, we can get done early. Yay! But we'd have to have people in here to do that. Okay. Well, we can just make un unilateral decisions. No, yes. can't we? No, I guess not. <laughs> no, I don't know. Three. Buildings and grounds won't take quite a bit. No. Thank you. <laughs> it is what it is, right? Unless you have a lot of questions. Jamie's the one that... We can find a magical... Poor Jamie. Dang. And it is what it is, right? Interviewing anybody? Yeah. Not good. Well, I take that back. We did we did fill one, but I still have five short. Yeah, that's what oh God. I mean, you guys have to be exhausted. I mean emotionally. I had, I had physically. one guy in the last payroll period, he worked hundred and seventy two hours. Oh my word. That's not good. Well, you do have a drink, though, don't you? He likes the check, but yeah, uh, but that's still not. It's, 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 it's going to wear him out. Yeah, no, that's just it's not. Right. I just walked over. <laughs> so does he just okay. stay there, sleep there, and just sleep, eat, and never just? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thirty-six, twelve, thirty-six. You might lose it yeah. after you came up here. Right on TV. That'd be a different. Not good. Okay. Hey, Jamie. How are we doing? He's tired too. Yeah, I know we're all tired. <laughs> and we're back. We're back. Okay, EMS. Hi, Jamie. Afternoon, commissioners. Uh, again, the budgets, just as everybody, we uh, complied with the request of the, uh, the budget. Um, with the EMS budget, we we needed to really um, after we put the, the budget together in, in the reduction, there's about a forty-five thousand dollar reduction out of that. Um, and I just want to kind of highlight where those came from and what we did. Um, some of that came out of the training uh, aspect of, of budgets, um, and that's really where we we offset some of the costs for training contracts for EMTs to go to paramedic school. And then the other forty thousand is what we use for. Um, Ambulance replacement equipment, replacement everything else. So it came out of some of it. Again, that's kicking the can kind of down the, the line, as we're well aware that uh, truck costs and, and such have gone up astronomical over the last yeah. several years, um, and we're just going to have to play catch up with that. So um, realistically, yes, we reduced that out of the budget, but it really should have been in the budget uh, moving forward. Um, but the budget that's presented in front of you met the, the guidelines that, that uh, the board uh, requested uh, moving forward on that. Um, some of the other things, and I know the administrator shared with you, I was doing a, a market cost analysis also with salaries and such. Um, since about February, we've been about six paramedics short um, out there, which is creating an astronomical amount of overtime. I was just sharing with Commissioner Cause. 
Um, I had a paramedic that worked almost 170 hours in a two-week period. Um, That's not safe. That's not uh, something that we can continue with. We have to do something. Um, I know we're talking about 2025's budget, but we're we're needing it now. I need to get paramedics in. We're all um, in the Kansas City metro, across the state, and everything else. It's, It's a very specific certification and such, and it's hard to do it. But when you have other agencies that are paying 10 to 12 thousand dollars more. Um, individuals aren't going to come here for that. They're going to go to those yeah, and make no that kind of money doing the same exact job. Yeah. So um, we, we've lost several um, down to Miami County. We've lost them to Franklin County. We've lost them to uh, KCK. We've lost you, you name it. They've gone. Um, and, again, we, we're just not keeping up. When we do these uh, increases, we were full. You know, two years ago when we, when we addressed our, our pace scale and such, we became full. Um, and unfortunately, the other agencies within the, the Kansas City metro and, and areas, they catch on, they make their adjustments, and, and then these individuals are, are getting their training, and then they go. Um, so I did uh, present to you, um, excuse me, presented it to Mark, and he shared it, I believe, with you, um, what it would really take to get us to, to market value. And unfortunately, none of us like that amount, none of us like that um, cost as, as we're moving forward, but that is something that um, if we don't do something soon, um, we're going to lose more just because of burnout and, and, and such, and then that's going to be services. That's going to be the potential of not having as many ambulances out on the streets. That means that uh, we may not have um, the ability to respond with a paramedic. It may mean that we're sending BLS trucks and not ALS trucks, and that's the difference between medications being given and no medications being given. And, and that's we're talking real uh, reduction in service. So, and, and that's not to scare or threaten the board or any of those. That's just reality of where we're at. Um, we're already seeing some days that we're having to put a BLS truck out. And myself and other administrators are following that truck to be the paramedic. And that's taken away from things that we need to be doing on the administrative side to keep us compliant with state laws and such within the service. So, um, we're at a pretty significant uh, crutch in the road, if you will, in regards to um, where we are with market value and pain and trying to, to get uh, paramedics in. We just don't, we're not getting the applicants. So like I said, we've been about five to six positions shy since February. And, and again, we're, we're covering that with overtime, we're covering that with administrators, we're covering that uh, with BLS trucks and administrators following, and that's just something that we need to need to address so uh, I don't know what more I can say on that other than we, we, we need to address it and that's well I think it's important to put a number to it Jamie okay and I know you have that number and I've shared it with the board but I yeah. think it's important to put a number to it so the issue like, like we talked about with the sheriff like we've talked about other things we provide a service we have to provide the service and to do it adequately you have to fund it this is another one of those life safety issues that if you uh, if you provide the service, which we are and we are obligated to, then you have to fund it. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, I guess, um, everybody's the paramedics on our ambulance are the same as the paramedics on every other ambulance, which expands the job pool. It also then expands the opportunity for those same employees to go somewhere else. And when somewhere else is start paying 10 to 15 percent more per year than we do they go and I can't blame them I mean I, if you have you have to do what's best for your family in those situations so we adjusted it like Jamie said a couple of years ago got all caught up and we did that after we had had a position open for almost a year I think so we, I think the final straw was we didn't get any applicants for six months so uh, that was the final straw here we are again the uh, the cost the cost for personnel and uh, employee benefits together is about four hundred ninety four thousand um, to to get the entire uh, department up to uh, market wage and that's not even going to put us above that's going to put us comparable that's going to put us into where if, if somebody were here for five years and they went down to Johnson County Medac or, or KCK or whatnot. It, it puts everybody into the comparable range, so we can we can draw some of those individuals into um, you know 
at least have a fight in the game for applicants that are out there looking and, and not, like Mark said, be 15% lower in salary. We're, we won't, we're not even getting the apps. We're, we're not even getting uh, – we, we happened to get one app that it was just somebody moving into the area. Um, it was looking for a job, and they, they were coming back, and they had some KPNF, and that's what they wanted. So we were fortunate to have that benefit. Um, but if it's for salary specific, we're not even getting apps. There, there is no applications out there. We're trying to, to send our own. We have two in paramedic school right now. It's another year before they graduate. Um, and then we're, we're going to try to send another two uh, this August. It's two years out. It, that, that, that doesn't help our situation no. right now. Um, we are unfortunate. We had some retirements and everything else. It caused some vacancies that came through. Um, but we also lost a lot because of salary. We have people that are leaving just because, again, they can go up the road and make $100,000 for the same job. What was the total amount again? 400, uh, 494077 is, is what we oh, have in Half a million. Right. Right. Boy, every, everybody that comes here is giving us some nice big numbers. Half a million. Well, so we're looking to close to a million just about in half salary million. adjustments. Yeah. Current current hourly rate is nineteen dollars and sixty eight cents. So we're not I mean, we're talking about nine, less than twenty dollars an hour is what these folks are making right now. And what right. would the if, if you made those adjustments, what would it have adjusted up to? We would like to start a medic at twenty two ten. But this isn't 20, 25 money. You're talking about what right you now, need right now. Right now. Yeah. Still make more. Yeah, this this would cover those into the 2025. This is going to be the, the 2025 is 2210. What what is uh, what are your uh, EMTs? What are the uh, right now? EMT is uh, 15. Uh, or excuse me, 1349, and then we want to bring them up to 1576. Are you requesting a budget amendment on the 2024 budget, or this is for next year? We need both. You're, you're requesting this to take effect immediately. Yes. Jamie, is this on a 2080 work year, hours? Or 2012. How, 2000, how much? Yeah, 20, 2,912 hours. Okay. This, this is that, that average 56-hour work weeks. Because of what you have to do. Okay. So there's overtime already built in that they have to work. But okay. again... They're working the hours to make the. I got you. And right now we have that available in the general fund to, be, to help do this for. Well, here the we go. Here now. <laughs> well, I mean that's a realistic uh, question. <laughs> no, that's a good question, and. Uh, I agree. For, uh, for 2025, this is not in the budget. Right, it's, I understand. It's not in 2025's budget. If we made the adjustment the middle of this year. Um, It'd be a stretch to try to fund it this year. Um, some of the some of the funds that we'd have to make available, it would be, it'd be cross our fingers so things turn out for the, for the rest of the year. Mark, could you put a dent in it though? I mean, I'm trying to work so. Well, so for this year, if he's asking for, let's say it's five hundred thousand uh, dollars, just to make it easy numbers. Um, we're we're under half a year now. So you're talking about 250000 for the rest of this year. Um, again, barring something unforeseen, like you know, the building falling down. Um, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it's, we could make it happen. If it's an emergency type situation. We could make it happen. But if it, it gives us zero room. I'm just saying some of this is like, I mean. So it, well, I, I don't know if you understood my question. There, he asked for 250 but we start out this year just to put something out there, 125000 just to get something in the pocket to let them know we're trying to fix this problem, but we might not can do it till next year. Yeah, Would so that be something to look at? So do like half, do get halfway way to where he wants to be, or maybe just address a specific position um, now and, some, of the other ones. Some kind of plan that we can start I with now. Jamie and I could probably work through that to, to get there um, the best we could. But Just a thought. It's still, the full amount would have to hit, and 
Oh, I know. Right, we I understand know. that. But the way he's but saying right well, now, he's, what he's, I'm listening to him right now, it's it's in dire need. I mean, I've never seen him present it like that. So if we could show people, plus our department head, that we're trying to make an effort to that, even if it's just half right now, and then we could start getting set up for next year, it's something out there. It's not just saying, no, we have to wait to next year. Just my two cents, folks. I understand what you're saying, but my personal view is I, when I look at all these things that have been laid on us today so far, uh, I would try to get it into the 2025 budget, but I don't I don't see a way to get it into this budget. But maybe you can. I mean, maybe if you come with a present, you know, you guys can work together, but this is pretty tight. I think you just heard right before here, the 911. It's 250000 this year. Right. No, I've got it's it. It's not budgeted. Yeah. So. That's why I said. I'm writing them down. And then Close we had a million dollars. Running that in my mind as well. And then we had a, what was it, the sheriff's, or the county attorney's request was. Well, well I think his is more with the budget. Yeah. It, it, but it's in the next year's budget. Yeah. 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 We're talking for this year, we've heard 250 for 911. $219,000 for the county attorney. For EMS to be yeah. full. Yeah, well, I know, that's what you're right. So, but for next year's yeah. budget, the request, this request would be 500000 Yes. And then, then t if you add t uh, county attorney's request on top, that's, uh, that's another $219,000. Yeah. You're, you're getting close to $700,000. Well, plus the 300000 for EMS, or for one. So, a million dollars. Yep. A million. We haven't talked about the road bridge yet. This is why you can't cut the rainy day funds out of budget. It's trying to cut them so tight that you remove the rainy day funds, then you have to borrow money. Doesn't make sense. That's that okay. Anyway, it's all going to have to be talked about. What assets do we have we can sell? Mike. Hmm. <laughs> Let's sell the courthouse and run it back. Let's sell pieces of it. Sell pieces of it. Oh, the pieces. We can make a stake out of here. Some days we make car bonds or rock. Marketplace. Maybe we could get like a hockey, a hockey stadium. There's a piece in the back of my truck right now. I think. Move on to health. Yes. What's that? Health department. Yes. Sure. Bring us all joy and happiness. The health department budget presented um, came in only about $29,000 above what it was at current. Um, that was, we were, I removed a, a uh, public nurse position out of the budget that was been vacant for the, the last year. We struggled to, to fulfill those positions. We we've, uh, haven't been able to get any apps on that. I have one retiring. We're already going to have to replace that position. So. Um, made the decision with the clinical manager and, and two public health nurses out there, the programs that we do, uh, we removed that. That freed up some of the money to make the adjustments that we needed to throughout the budget. So that was some savings in the, um, the overall health department budget. As you're aware, the health department budget is very um, difficult just because of, of how it's funded through uh, multiple grants. There's matching funds, there's different years and, and such. So the first six months, um, just in the 2025 budget alone is already coming off of the grant year that we just started uh, July 1. So half of that year is already on, on funding that's coming in. So some of those matching funds are, are covered in into this budget. So um, overall, th this is a, this this budget comes in, uh, like I said, $29,000 more than it was last year. Um, yes, there's some ups and downs in, in specific line items. However, the, the total and the overall any balance of that has is, is been moved. Um, to about $29,000 increase. Looks great. So, with health department and EMS, about 12, 15% of our budget. I don't think it's quite that. About 10. Well, including EMS, it might be. Yeah, with health and EMS together. And? <clears throat> 12, 15%. Yeah, 12. 
looks good to me. That part's fine. Yeah. That was easy. Yep. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jamie. <coughs> Excuse me. Community we're going way. We're supposed to be asking for me, and we're getting hit with them. Yeah. Yeah. We're going the wrong way. That's exactly right. Hi, Jamie. Again. Hello. <laughs> we're back. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, excuse me. Oh. Okay. It's just a typo, so we got a new page. Yeah, my, I feel like mine's super straightforward because it's. I feel like I'm small compared to others, and I really only ask for people in JDC housing. So you just hurt for me. Yeah, you did just hear for me. Yeah, I don't, that's fine. I don't see anything on that. Can't yell at you when they go down. What? We can't yell at you when they go. Still a reduction. Your overall budget's reduction. Down. Yeah. I have zero for you questions. Ask her if she can find some money in her budget. Yeah, I've been asking everybody. No, the dollars is going to say she needs a quarter of a million that we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want 150? Give me 200. Mm. That's the way we used to do it. <laughs> so the state is funding more uh, services for mental health services. Is there any type of uh, additional grant funds or that such things that possibly could apply to your uh, <sighs> corrections or? I see something here. Well, yeah, I mean, so I, I've i written five grants already this year, yeah. four which are regular ones. One was the competitive one that we did not receive this year. The JCAB grant that runs uh, the juvenile offender part of our programs, and then our adult comp plan, juvenile comp plan. I wrote the BJA grant. Uh, I'm working on a different juvenile grant to offset the cost of losing the competitive grant. Uh, it's non-competitive. They say if we apply, we'll get the money oh. as long as we're spending it the way we should. That's a half million. That'll sustain my services and then allow me to partner and get a in-house substance abuse and mental health counselor for adolescents and their families just on site. Uh, so I'm working on that. It's due next week. And then I have two RFPs to complete for more sunflower funds in case we don't get the BJA grant, and also to extend the longevity of the opiate money that y'all already give me. Uh, what are sunflower funds? Is that, is that a That's special? That's the foundation. Is that yeah. is that a, a foundation? Mm -hmm. So they're the Part, those are private funds. No. Through the state. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's all opiate settlement funds. Okay. Okay. But I prefer to save county opiate settlement funds that are supposed to come in for 18 years and unless these companies go bankrupt. We don't know how, how much uh, to anticipate that we're going to get year after year through the opiate settlements on our municipalities fights addiction fund. So I'm going to apply for Sunflower fights addiction fund, one, to keep the jail justice involved behavioral health liaison position. Uh, and to keep the work going last year that we started for cross-system efforts here in Leavenworth that won a National Achievement Award, too. Yeah. National Achievement Awards. Um, and then if all else fails, I plan to write a fourth grant for the Kansas Governor's Grant Program that's like will help us pay for equipment or capital improvements or something else that I need money for. 
My biggest fear in life is we get all the grants, mostly the BJA grant. That one really scares me. <laughs> then I'm hostage <laughs> so, <laughs> until we close that grant reporting out. So, um, But, yeah, so most of the grants are to enhance or establish new services, um, but I can't obviously supplant funds like any of my personnel costs. Um, if I replace those with grants, that would be supplanting. And then the JDC money that y'all paid to farm our kids out, um, that's required by statute. So, I, But I'll keep finding money. So We like it. <laughs> it's, I'm slightly competitive, so I'm always like, what? I noticed that. The worst they can say is no. <laughs> that's right. So, Don't be I shy. didn't know if there was additional monies coming from, since, since they have provided a little more funding, if, if that was going to open some doors. Yeah, so we ended up getting $52,000 back um, in our juvenile that was cut last year when we separated from Atchison. The state thought we should have that money back because uh, there's a new grant director. And then uh, we got $56,000 on the adult side additional for operations related to uh, just inflation. They recognized that they couldn't. We all have money. We don't have enough money to pay for basic stuff. So they didn't want us to cut services to keep paying rent, so they gave us fifty-six thousand dollars to, uh, you know, pay for increased costs, which worked out for personnel, the increases in benefits and capers and all of the things. So I count all my pennies. I think I make Rhonda nervous with how close I want to get to spending all the money. I know I made Janet in the clerk's office nervous. I was like, I have to spend all of this money. I have 18 cents. Where are we going with this? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I spent $8,000 in June just to make sure it's all spent. So. I appreciate it. It shows. Thank you. Thank you. No questions from me. Good no. job, Jamie. All right. I'll let you guys oh. be. I think anybody nope. has any more? Nope. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Was this now a time to ask for the deputy director we brought up earlier? Just kidding. See you tomorrow. <laughs> then what would I do? I'd be bored. What's tomorrow? <laughs> Take care. Oh, Thank you, Jay. Mr. Steve, Mr. Mr. Come on down. I thought you meant something here. Oh, Man of the hour. Hi, Aaron. I've been dreading. Yeah, I'm glad I saw it at the bottom, Doug. Good afternoon, commissioners. <laughs> afternoon. Um, where would you like to start? Justice Center, General, or sure. Cushing? Sure. Oh, Justice Center it is. So Justice Center took a slight reduction. I think it's 0.01% over the total budget of the Justice Center. As directed, we were looking for any savings and any cuts that we could make, as well as adjusting where some increase, others, other line items decrease to make sure that it was as flat as possible. I will preface this is this budget is a as flat as possible, but it is also a, a maintenance deficient budget. Um, when you look at our capital money that we are putting away. If you take all three of the budgets that we have, the courthouse, the justice center, as well as the Cushing, we roughly put away $360,000 annually for capital improvements. For us to actually not be deficient, we would need to be closer to around $570,000 annually so that we could actually, at current cost, maintain our facilities and put away money for larger expenditures such as roofs, boilers, chillers, parking lots, those items that have to be done and was not planned correctly on saving for. Chillers, would that be like something that breaks down and it's not What's anticipated? That? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Chillers, would that be like something that breaks down and wasn't anticipated? Well, we are currently... <laughs> to last forever. <laughs> Currently, knock on wood, um, the chiller that is at your courthouse that we're talking about that we had an issue with, um, we have we, we did quite a bit of work to it, and uh, there were two modules in the United States, and we needed one of them, and I bought both of them so that we have it in case the second module goes out on the upper. They're interchangeable, so we have that on hand. 
Seven. Makes sense to me. Are they that saying, old? The we've got to put the, hard to get. The chiller is 21 years old, sir. Just need to stop the delayed maintenance. It's kind yes. of yeah. on the yeah. number of that years you smart. said um, currently between the three buildings we set aside $360,000. And it should be closer to five seventy. So we're about 210 short. Annually. Uh, yes, sir. Of course. Yeah. At least it's not five hundred thousand this time, Jeff. <laughs> and that's the, it. And the annual that you're you're typically short, the the largest fund that you're short on is your uh, courthouse general fund, and that is because the courthouse general fund it subsidizes all of your other buildings. The justice center only subsidizes that budget only subsidizes that building. Cushing only subsidizes it. But your courthouse general takes care of your EMS stations, all three of them. Right. It takes care of your shop. It takes care of any items out at the transfer station that fall under buildings and grounds items. It takes and care of the courthouse, the annex, all of those. So the, the, the fund that you're most efficient on on capital would be the courthouse on putting away money for your capital improvement plans for, for that gamut of buildings that you guys cover under that fund. And capital improvements is not actually improvements. It's just maintaining what we have. Status quo, yeah. Correct. Your, does anybody have any questions on the Justice Center before I, I move on? Okay, the, the Justice Center budget, if you guys are okay with that one, then with the next one on yours is your special building. That is what I refer to and what we commonly refer to as Courthouse General um, because that's what it was previously or how it was always stated to me. Um, that one we took a reduction as well. Um, that one's closer to a 2% reduction. And, and the reason that we did that is any items that we could make cuts on, like we took out flooring items in there. Um, we had an increase on our Honeywell contract because it went up and it's maintained. Um, we had an increase on our elevator maintenance because the state previously added third-party inspections and we had to regulate to those. Now they're talking about removing it because it went from the Wild West to the most strict rules that they possibly could, and the state got major pushback from it, and that was slowly but surely they're scaling that back on on, on elevator maintenance, on what they're expecting. Um, we took an increase on our uh, trash services that we have for our buildings on our monthly costs on that, but we also removed our total cost for intermittent on-call fill-in, or not intermittent on-call, but our janitorial. Um, for we Sometimes we had our, our health department would be gone and we would subcontract that out. Now it is other duties as assigned for our nighttime staff that if we have somebody gone, um, they fill in out at the health department. We just had that for a 10-day span where they filled in no loss of service, so we reduced that um, annual cost out of there since we could cover it in-house. Um, we, we try to get as creative as possible on staying as flat as possible. There is that large expenditure of the outside of the courthouse as well as a roof, <laughs> and we're well aware of that. And That's, uh, not, in That's not, that is not in your budget here. But that... Our RFQ was answered. We received five companies awesome. um, back on possible services, and we're working towards hard numbers, not just budgetary numbers, for the BOCC on exterior as well as roofing costs. Any questions on that one? On EMS, you have some that's got <coughs> uh, $5,000 for maintenance, some you got one that's got $3,500. On your EMS stations? Yeah. Well, you have three, three separate stations, and some of them don't require as much, if that makes sense. Sometimes you can fill in, like, which line item are you looking at, sir? Uh, 317. Line item 317, 3500, 3500, no change. That is $3,500 annually that we use for building maintenance items for that specific for EMS That's station. Oxy number two. 
Correct. You roughly, that's just for your building maintenance. Anything that would come in the form of capital improvement, how of that would come out of your capital improvement. So like a parking lot for that would have to come out of your capital improvement. Is that going to come out of our capital improvement anytime soon? Tipping the scales of items of priority. You have a courthouse with a roof and an outside and a parking lot. I, I, so we need to take it back to gravel then? It's one of those things that, as as a board, if you direct me to do a parking lot and leave the outside, not a problem. If you it's, want it's, all, it's all failing. the, I, it's failing. It, 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 it is failing. You have you have major cracks through it. It should have never been done in asphalt. The best thing for that, with the size of the, the buses that go through there, is a concrete slab. So that way, either that or a turn lane that's a concrete slab that parking off to the side. So that those uh, those bus uh, sorry ambulances as they come in make that curve on concrete and they're not on an asphalt. You look at the failure of the asphalt in the back corner where the dump truck the picks up the along the front side where it's washing out right along the entrance. Yeah, it's it's failing as well. Yes, it was built as cheap as they could build it. We've been talking about that parking lot for I guess. as long as I've been here. Yeah. Seven years. I know, but it's, it's, it's a worse every year. Well, but we haven't replaced it in that seven I know, years, but so it's, it's well, it's, 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 yeah, it's a total rehab. Yep. It's not being able to go in there and fix it's it properly. It's got to be tore out. It's a base failure. Day. Yeah, it's, it's already failed in the base, and every winter when you put salt in, it just makes it worse. So one of these days, somebody's going to have to deal with it. Won't it's not going to be you, huh? Won't be me. Okay. Other than that, have any questions? I don't have really to have. No. Nope. On no, to the thank next. Thank you, Aaron. Keep Enjoy. going. Cushing. Cushing. Looks good. Okay. Um, Cushing's budget as well um, for the twenty-five. It's that one took a slight. No, that one took a slight increase on that one. <coughs> and wait a second. No, I wonder. It took a decrease. I apologize. That one's a two percent, two point one percent decrease as well. Again, coming in as flat as possible. That building, um, so far, knock on wood, we've had some roofing issues that we've been able to take care of with patching through um, vendor. We we constantly work with the. HVAC system had been a challenge in that because it's a two-part system. We're getting better at controlling our uh, air handlers on that as well as our VAV boxes since it is a two-pipe two system. You're either in heat or cool. Um, temp temperatures comfortable in winter, not burning people up, trying to stay as comfortable as possible in summertime and not freezing people out. It's, it's a constant attention daily. Big deal. Heat and cold are normally the things we get a lot of phone calls about. Well, it's kind of like you can add sweaters and stuff if it gets a little too chilly, but you can only peel off so much if it gets too hot. <laughs> but as I as as I stated before, um, we tried to come in as flat as possible. But if if there was ever a chance to put away money in our capital for deferred maintenance. Mm -hmm. Not this year. This is the worst year I've ever seen in all the years. It's it's one of those things that we had it was a, bad. a bunch of things. The, the, the 08 09 budget was easier than this. Wow. You know, during the recession. We didn't have the inflation back then. Well, that's true. We, that's true. You know, it, it was tough, have, but it wasn't COVID. that bad. I mean, we was. Well, we can hope that that starts. I mean, of course, we did a big reduction. I mean, it course. actually does go down, not yeah. supposedly goes down, but it actually yeah, goes but down. Yeah. We didn't have I think what's COVID getting, issue. Was, was been the most difficult thing is the inflation. Everything we do, the inflation is headed. At a high percentage. And it's not and it's not, percent. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a high percentage. Minor. It's not. The, the other items that I would be discussing with you guys today are the sewer districts and those state flats. Completely. Fine. Uh, 
Let it hear something. Eric doesn't like to change those because they require a vote. They require a vote. <laughs> and as long as we aren't close <laughs> on our financials, um, good reason. You're, you're one that takes the most uh, is Highcrest. It takes the most because everything out there is on grinder pumps. And if you do see a change in anything, it would be on that one since the county foots the bill for the grinder pump replacements on those. That was the original deal that we had. So anything that's from the alarm out, like non-electrical on the alarm in is theirs, alarm out is on the county, and a cost on a new grinder pumps right around three. Yeah. And we probably have two call-outs a month. On grinder pump failures, yep, yep, maybe more. They don't last. Yep. How many extras do you have? In, hmm? I said, how many extras do you have? Set. Do you Bunny extra of those. <laughs> uh, those are those those are contracted out. Haynes okay. um, comes out and puts a temporary pump in when they pull their pump. Um, then they take it back to the shop and they're like, most of the times it's anywhere from seventeen hundred and nineteen hundred on a rebuild. So at what point does Two thirds the cost of versus a new one makes sense. So you look at the age of it and then go from there. So when we do studies in the future to see whether it's or study or design to hook onto the city, then that will be a public hearing for increase. The yes, yes. The best thing that could happen for us is the city of Lansing expand their sewer all the way out to Kenneth Bernard. Because instead of looking at two miles of pipe, you'd look at about a mile and a lift station to pump it over that ridge there, mm -hmm. and, to, and and send it gravity the rest of the way. You know, there's only one. I want to see that see that happen. You'd still have. I, yeah. I mean, you'd still West have a significant the, amount yeah. of of, mm -hmm. of costs, right. and it would be on the homeowners in yeah. that. Yeah, that's sewer district. district. But right. if you could, but if you could get the west of the high school. We got a volunteer annexation by the county years ago, that 200 and something acres. If we ever get a developer out there, just saying, then there could probably be some opportunities because that, that, that could be able to, that could be a pretty good sized subdivision. The, it's it's not the opportunities; it's closing the distance. So if you look at your closest connection right now, is at the base of Lansing High School. That's your closest, yep. and you're roughly two miles. So if you push it to Kenneth Bernard, you're within a mile. But the problem is, is that mile is still on the subdivision itself, yeah. in, on that sewer district. And that's why a city won't pick it up until it becomes more, yeah. It's for them, yeah, for them to want to do it. And those grinder pumps are terrible. Lift station. I mean, terrible. The lift station is terrible. Hearing the alarm go up. We got, I got rid of all those stupid things out there. But it took a while. Anyway, my two cents. Any other questions? Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Yes, ma'am. Awesome job. Thank you. you guys have a good day. You too. Thank you. County appraiser. Good afternoon, commissioners. Well, it hasn't been driving? so far. Was that? It hasn't, it hasn't been, been so far. far. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my first time doing this, so bear with me. Um, you went so, down, so it should be easy. Overall reduction in the budget was about $10,000 um, this year, and the majority of that came out of our contractual funds, which includes, of course, the payment to Joe Roth for the commercial services, but we budgeted $25,000 in there in case we had to have an outside agency do an appraisal for us. Um, which is actually part of um, how the process works. If we have um, a taxpayer that appeals their value, they create a an appraisal specifically for that appeal. Our only two options are to accept that appraisal and or go out and get another one from the third party. Right. So we've been budgeting that in there for that particular situation. Fortunately, it hasn't happened, but that was, um, that was the major reduction in our budget this year. Um, there was some... Some minor other uh, deductions. Uh, we've had some some vacancies this year. Um, we hired two new people recently. One started today. One started last Monday. So we have filled two of the three positions we have open. Uh, we still have a third position out there available. Um, Bob's been on vacation for quite some time, so there's not really any movement on that at this stage of the game. But. Um, 
That's that's really us in a nutshell. Um, Six thousand nine hundred ninety-six dollars change in labor. We do have um, figured in for three employees to get um, raises this year, moving up a step from appraiser one to appraiser two, and a third employee who is potentially going to get their RMA this year. So that'll make them a master level. That's pretty much where we're at. So questions. Now, what's the overtime plan for? Do you know? Um, like when we have out of out of class, out of uh, Topeka schools, you know, where we have to drive to Wichita or something along those lines, they have to leave on a Sunday, or um, you know, God forbid, we have a natural disaster and we have to pull some time on something along those lines outside so, of work hours. Okay, so just based on kind of an average yes. history. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we we do our level best to avoid it, but we do have one one appraiser in class in Wichita right now, so she's, you know, had to drive down on, on Sunday to go to that class. So Yeah. People probably don't realize if a tornado comes through, the appraiser's office job. hits the ground running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Saturday, yeah. Sunday. I think the last one was on a Saturday, I think. You know, it takes a lot of time to go through and, and figure out the amount of damage that's down in that area when it happens. And that's required for the state assistance, so... Uh, Yes. It's something, it's, it's not like we just want to do it. We have to do right. it. Then does the FEMA reimburse Oh, yeah. And a couple <laughs> years later. Years later. Yeah. <laughs> Look how, uh, yeah, but they, they, and they do it so quickly. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah. And the whole backside. Yeah. So we hire a county appraiser. The county just hires the county appraiser. Yes, sir. But really, uh, it's sort of like, if you, if you look at the big picture, it's sort of like an unfunded mandate from the state. It's absolutely an unfunded mandate. Because um, you follow the regulations from the Department of Revenue. Yes, sir. Property Valuation Division sets your regulations and all the standards that you follow. Um, we do hire the appraiser. Off the approved list from the, the state. That, that meaning that they are qualified mm -hmm. and they've taken the necessary training. Mm -hmm. but, but really... Uh, your office is really uh, giving the valuation of the property so that we can fund our schools and we can fund our infrastructure and we can fund our government entities. And, and that it is, is correct. Uh, basically a state of Kansas function, but you're working for the county. It's kind of a crossover. Yes, it is. Yeah, we are we are governed by the the ultimately the legislation of the state. They set forth, you know, what your assessment rates are, you know, what, what, you know, how, you know, you're going to value that property once a year. Different states do different things. They may value once every 10 years, and the only time that changes other than an index change would be a sale, for instance, you know. But, yeah, we, uh, so, so it, you know, basically goes from legislation to PVD. PVD gives us guidelines on how we should approach something, especially if it's ambiguous, you know. We get some strange ones out there where we're like, how are we supposed to do this? You know, how are we supposed to implement this process? So, that. so that's what I think is a confusing thing to a lot of people yep. out, out yep. in the public. No they, they think that we hire the appraiser, and we've even been told by Facebook legis legislators <laughs> that uh, that yeah. we tell you uh, what, what amount of uh, money revenue we, we need, need, and then you go match the, yeah, go, the yeah. appraisals <laughs> to the, like, get our revenues. And that's and that's not correct at all, is it? No, sir. Not even remotely. You've been at some of those meetings and they stood up there and said that, haven't you? I have. It's lucy. <laughs> well, everything up there, the county yep. tells the appraiser they need this many millions of dollars and they yep. go and match the properties to make it happen. Everything in the appraiser's office down to the mapper is the Kansas statute that says yep. the, can the county appraiser's office by statute has to hire a mapper to map the parcels so everything and that's what in the appraiser's paid. office <laughs> it's a public education campaign really because uh, be. people don't understand that and they also don't understand that we don't control how much money that the schools levy or the cities levy we only control the county's, small county's portion. portion which is a minority of that now there there are a myriad of guidelines to stay within compliance with the state, you know, that being said, we cannot ultimately stay in, to stay in compliance. We have to be within really 10% of the value of the property. So if 
in, in hard times, if, if we say a house is worth half a million and it sells for $400,000, we're out of compliance, you know, on that one single property. Now they average them all together. But, right. you know, that being said, you know, you string a whole bunch of that together, yeah, our values are going to drop for us to stay in compliance. So, you know. Typically, it's not the case, right? No, not not in this stage of the game. So, you know, now I'm not saying we're not going to have a late 09 again, you know, where we overextend and, you know, they start loaning money to people that probably shouldn't get that kind of loan, you know, unfortunately. But the only way you're going to be able to cap the valuation or the tax on the valuation is to enact legislation through the state. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it. Right. This body can't do it. No, sir. Yeah. And I think that's... It's too bad they don't have that cover that in orientation when they go to Topeka. <laughs> or, in the or in high school. Yeah, I was going to say in high school. <laughs> well, at least any elect, elected official class. should have that it should be orientation. Required. Yeah, 101. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a... And you probably deal with it all the time, people not not understanding even about their comparables. And, yes. Yes. Um, it's confusing and it's very <coughs> disconcerting when your value goes up exponentially mm -hmm. in one year. Yes, yes. And we, we do our level best to educate the general public on it, you know, specifically the people that come in and, and question their value. And, and I would say 90% of those people just want to understand the process. You know, you get to 10% that want to come in there and beat their chest and, you know. Don't want to pay any taxes at all. Yes, yes, yes. Those type of people, you know. Um, but. The vast majority of them like just want to understand the process. Whether they agree with it or not, it's our job to, you know, to educate the process to them. So. Well, well, you have better luck than some of us do. It's not always the case. <laughs> okay. So. Well, just, thank you I'm, good. I'm just so glad you are one of my kids are school teachers. All right. For right. Hope your afternoon gets better. Thank you. It's almost um, over, so it can't get much better. Tomatoes. Thank you, Rose. Although we've asked everybody else to bring us back something cheaper, we've got to eat. We're going on. We have our increase. We've asked for everybody else to bring us back. I was hoping. This one should be easy, though. Well, Commissioners, that leaves us the last one, the last budgets to go over. Um, and I will be handling those today. Um, we have a few. I'll just start with administration since that's first in the finder. Um, administration is where we have our budget officer, our economic development director, and um, we'll also be moving um, accounts payable into administration in 2025 as well. So that's where you see the, the, the uh, right. biggest part of the change. Yep. But you also saw an offset in the office that position. Right. Um, are we going to be discussing at a work session later in the summer or in the fall about the uh, economic development position or where we're where we're headed on that on a position are you talking on about a, well, tomorrow either on a position or uh, or just the direction we're going to take I don't have any plans for a work session at this time. Um, uh, as far as I know, uh, the LCDC will be here tomorrow and report for me to present their budget to you. Um, but I don't have any plans for a work session right now. Well, Mark, what are we doing with the person when that retired from us? Is that money just going back to the general fund, or, well, or is that being split up on something else? Yeah. So, Your recommendation. Um, the position of economic development is funded through the economic development levy, which is its own. I mean, it's not part of the general fund. Um, the uh, position is currently open, as you're aware, but that's, that's where it's at. So we uh, can advertise and fill it at any, at any point, but uh, because the budget's going on right now, we have more things on the plate to deal with, so I haven't given a lot of consideration. Well, I, I, I guess my two cents on this, I don't even know why we'd – wouldn't put that with somebody else and do like that, try to save some money from that. I don't think we need, um, which I'm going against what I said earlier, I don't think we need a full-time economic director unless they're handling some other duties. Well, I think we need to discuss. 
discuss what that per I mean that we did have a goal for that person to accomplish. Maybe there's some but maybe those responsibilities could be put on uh, that's what I'm asking Mike. currently working here. I'm, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. I didn't know what the command commissioners wanted to do with it. I didn't want it to begin with, so hey. I know, so, I know. Uh, and I yeah, and I understand now. The increase in salaries, is this part of the salaries that was saved in the treasurer's office then? You're talking about administration? Still? Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, we have our budget officers right. moved up. Right. Uh, we have the accounts payable that will be moving in there, too. That's so the that was a position that was moved out of the treasurer's office. Right, into that. Be in the clerk's yeah, into that one. Yeah. So it's That's the difference. not a savings in the county. It's, a it's still a shift. It's just a shift out of that office. It's just a shift in. All right. That's where it looks. Yeah. Okay. Hey, county Commission, um, the uh, County Commission budget, uh, you will see a change in that. Um, just a, we've moved the mental health uh, payment that we make each year from the outside agencies into this. It's, it's not an increase, it's not a decrease, it's just we moved it into your budget versus. It's a contractual the, obligation. It's a, Obligation. Yeah, and that's no different than what we just put costs on the right. court. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. I agree with that. Yep. The other lines uh, maintain status quo. Uh, the salaries obviously include the 2% of your line. Okay. Okay, courthouse generally you see a big difference here. And this is where I told you I have plugged some money into the budget to try to pay for the courthouse repairs over a 10-year period. Um, that's where I put the money into wow. this line item, and then you'll see it under transfer to capital improvement. That increase would be towards, um, hopefully, completing repairs on the courthouse using our current reserves, and then re, uh, replenishing those reserves over the course of 10 years so we don't have to issue debt. Um, last I checked, interest on um, a lease purchase type of financing is it seven over seven percent? Oh, so I'd rather keep the. No, thank you. Um, optimally, we would do that over a five-year period, but it's just yeah. it's not an option with, with the money we have. And on, honestly, putting this money aside may not be an option with the other things that you. Prefer. So I have a question on that. Uh, let's just say I'm not suggesting this, but I'm just asking <laughs> if. Uh, we just decided we were going to eat the courthouse costs uh, like next year. We said, okay, next year we're going to levy four mills to repair the courthouse. Is that, I mean, are we limited in any way on that? Or are we. Uh, no, you are not limited. And then reduce it back down. Is that what you're saying, Mike? I'm, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just putting I know, it I just asked as, as a. I know, and but then it, you bring it back down. Yeah, and then bring it back down. Yeah, whether, it's, whether it's legal or what the rules are, because uh, and am I understanding right? That's what they did with the the roof on the Justice Center. Yeah. They raised a half a mil in 2016 and had a heck of time. And that was supposed to come off. And all they could get when I come into office, all they could get was a quarter the first year and a quarter oh. the next year. So it was hard to get it off. Absolutely, it was hard to get off. So, so that's one option on that. And then, commissioners. I, yeah. And then the other, are there any options as far as a vote of the people? Why would well, you do that? Commissioner, you, that's that's not, been as, like as, as I think I've said yeah. this before, yeah. um, Mark's proposal is the way to do it. There that. is your authority, you have the authority to fix the courthouse. You don't have the authority to build a new courthouse, and you don't have the authority to issue debt that's like a bond to do it. You can do a lease purchase because there's kind of a loophole there, but that's it. Um, going out for a vote on it, um, if you want to vote to to affirm your decision, that's all it is. It would be not, just an advisory vote. That could it's be not a legally, vote. It's not yeah. legally binding. Yeah. And, it, and if you would happen to get a vote that they say, no, we don't want you to. Then what are you going to do? Then we'll you, you, you still have to fix it. And We've been elected yeah. to make those decisions. While Aaron was here, I could have asked him, but in the next three months, you're going to see more barricades and scaffolding going up around the current courthouse to make sure that we are, uh, the people using the building Safe. are protected from additional failures because they're coming. 
there's, this wasn't a one done. So, so once we get the, all the details from the folks on what the requirements are going to be to repair the facility, though it, it is possible that we could do it in steps like, say, 2026 budget, two meals to do X, and then we can make a decision going forward. No, you you have not. to do it all. Yeah, I mean, we have to do all it. once. So, so the roof, you have to do the roof first. Okay. Because the roof, the, the water seepage coming out of the roof is what created the problem that we have. It allowed water to infiltrate where it shouldn't, which created rust. The rust eventually got to the point where the brackets were holding the terracotta, and, and it fell. There are holes in the side of the building where the terracotta is attached. If you don't fix that, fixing the roof does nothing because the water can still infiltrate those holes. So you're saying we'll it's probably all going to have to be done all in one fell swoop. There will be some things that can be put off, but those aren't going to be included in our original bid. That Those will be things that are ongoing on top of the $5 million or so that we have, depending on how the bids come out. Yeah, well, this is very unfortunate. But... So what you know, this is one of those things that you really things? can't budget for. I mean, you can start setting money aside uh, 100 years ago when they built the building. Um, you could have started setting money aside. Because you only just depreciate and set but, aside as much as you had in it. But, yeah, but it, it, it's hard to do, and most places would have never done it because it, it just takes so long. But when you get to big maintenance items like this, what do you do? You, you don't you, put it on the historical. We're fortunate. <laughs> well, we're fortunate <laughs> that we... On the we're fortunate that we have reserves so that we yeah, can finance this ourselves. We need to pay those reserves back because they're not reserves for this building. Mm -hmm. So we do have to pay ourselves back. But otherwise, um, it's very possible if you had to issue a bond, let's say we had to go get a 10-year bond for this, um, you would have to go to a vote. That's the only way that you could do it. You can't issue debt for this building without a vote. So that's where we would be. But so walk away from this and issue debt for a new bill. And that would require a vote as well. So I I think that um, the money that's in there is it's what I could pull out of the budget and put in there. The 10 year plan looks like really I couldn't come up with more than that and put everything I could in there um, and still try to be responsible. It makes, it makes sense. As, yeah. as you see in our budget I always have a bit of a reserve in the general fund that I don't budget. It's less than it should be. It should be somewhere around 8 to 9% minimum, and I'm at about 2%. Yep. So mm. that's there, but that that is the, if you know, it's not a rainy day or a slush fund, it's if revenues don't come in the way they should, that's our buffer. If, if, we're, if our revenues drop and we're let more than 2% off, then we have to start making mid-year cuts. So let me ask you one more question. If we uh, set our budget for this year, and because we don't have this information yet that you're, you've gone out to find out how much the building's going to be, we get the information and we realize, well, it's going to be X amount, are we going to need to wait till the next budget cycle to do it, or can we make a budget amendment in the middle of the... Because we're going to finance it, we're going to self-finance out of our reserves. The reserves are already budgeted expense. So, okay. so when you transfer money into a reserve, that's when you budgeted it. So each year, like this one, you'll see transfer to capital improvement, $679,000. That's the, that's the budgeted expense. It goes into the reserve, and when it comes time to spend it, you don't have to amend your budget because it's a capital expense. So Sorry, what if the amount we need is more than that? It, it can't be more than we have in reserves, right. or well, we can't do I mean, it. Or we have to, we, we, that's where your levy then, of the... Then, then I would have to go to the bank. Talk to them about a lease purchase, or or in the 2026 budget, the next budget cycle, you get a mill levy increase. To you could do an overall yes, yeah. If we if we had to bid right now, you could decide to how much you wanted to increase the levy to cover. You could do that, that's but I don't know that timing wise, that's really going to be a viable option. Simply because we really can't wait another year. I mean, the the cost of the scaffolding. The potential for additional damage now that the terracotta is gone, water infiltration. It's just, I don't think we can wait another year. I just, it, it's going to end up costing us even more money. Yeah. Are we going to have enough funds, though, the way you're doing? You believe we are? We have enough in reserves to do it, but we need to pay it back. Well, you have to pay it back along the way. Every well, year. well, the question might be for well, the following year is can we increase the mill levy to put more money back towards our reserve to replenish it 
so that we don't get caught in a situation where we have to go borrow money. And that might be what we have to do. That very well could be. The last uh, budget that's in there is your employee benefits. We've talked about this multiple times. This is where our insurance, our CAPERS, our KPNF, our um, taxes, our, our federal uh, FICA, all that comes out of this fund. Um, you see a significant increase. This is just the adjustment that we talked about for the last three months. That and CAPERS and KPNF. CAPERS and KPNF, but they, they uh, definitely increased. Um, and that's going to. That's big time. Are they going to do that every year? It's probably think? just going to continue. Uh, because I mean, they don't want to fund the retirements. I would guess that KPNF or CAPERS, I mean, is probably close to being where it's going to stay because the new people coming on the system will start outweighing the people who are coming off. And since the new people are under CAPERS 3, the benefit is not as, as significant. Basically, the people coming on right now, they make the county pay the same amount for that employee as we did on CAPERS 1 and 2, but the benefit is not the same. So the, what we pay in now for the new people is actually going to opt to help bail out CAPERS for the poor management that they had over yeah. the last 50 years. Yeah. What concerns me is KPNF because they haven't amended it, and they mismanaged it just as poorly as they did CAPERS. We'll That's why it's at 25% now. So 25, we as an employer have to spend 25% employee puts in four. So 29% is paid for that benefit. And it's, I believe, a lot of that is bailing out the poor decisions that they made in the past. But I think that one's going to continue to go up. I and I think they'll probably continue to make more investments in decisions. Well, they're fortunate right now because of where the stock market's been. But wait until right. we have another, uh, bad, uh, some five years of bad stock market. That's just, they're just going to drop back off again. Because oh, they're so right. underfunded, you can't get caught up. Even, get even if, they, if yep. they budget for a 7% return on their investment and they're only 50% funded, they need 14% return in the market. They'll That's not going to happen. That. They'll never get that. They've never had it. Anyways, that is, that's the part of the budget that uh, I'm responsible for as far as the, the budget. Um, as I said earlier today, this was just the kickoff. Um, the official kickoff. We've been working on this for months. But now you have the documents. You can have time to go through them, come up with additional questions, comments, concerns. If you, again, if you need any department to come back that you want to meet with one on one, I'll be happy to schedule them. And any commissioner can come and ask me that. I will put them on a future agenda. Um, in uh, two weeks, we will have on the agenda the revenue neutral. Yeah, revenue neutral um, resolution that you have to adopt. That will be in two weeks. And then this budget will be approved uh, late August. So anytime between now and late August, we can talk about these things. But we do have to set a public hearing for that August. And with that, when you set that, you have to have your mill levy pretty much Sorry, sick leave. You want to talk about that? Sick leave payout for retiree. Benefit. Is it being discussed? Well, it's the line item, but it's not on the 2025. The sick leave payout for retired yeah. employees. Yeah. Can talk about that now or wait till. Well, I, I'm, I'm letting you know, I've said it multiple times now, sick leave buyout will be the first uh, item that we look at removing if we have to in order to stay within budget. Um, I'm giving people. Plenty of head up, heads up. It would be at the first of the year that it would happen. Um, and it, yes, it is on the table. Um, I, all so, of these things that you heard today, all the requests that are over and above what's in the budget, those are things that we have to talk about and address. And however we end up handling those and how our income comes in, that's going to make a decision on how we handle that something. So what about the open position policy that we have? How, how does that work, and would that help us to control some of these expenses? Do they have to come to the board if we implement that? or what? So the – I will tell you that it only impacts the elected department heads. It does not impact the non-elected department heads because they're not going to use the funds that are in salaries. They're not. The elected department heads – you have a policy in place that says twice a year you can 
direct the clerk and the county administrator to do an evaluation on open positions that were budgeted but not filled. So if we'll, we'll just say, I'll just use the economic development one. Let's say that was a position that was budgeted but it's unfilled. So we get to, towards the end of the year and there's that, that position still isn't filled. The policy says that we can take that money out of that salaries line item, amending their budget to reduce the salaries line item. But it just goes into general fund carryover. Well, it's already in the general fund for carryover. So it doesn't impact anything. The, the policy really is so that um, departments don't go spend that money on something other than salaries. Now, they can't spend out of their salaries line item. It's, we already have a policy against that. But they could overspend in another line item, and their whole budget wouldn't go over because they yep. had that buffer in their salaries line. Yep. That's what the policy was for. I could do it next week. I could have the numbers to do that. All you're doing is taking the money that is for open positions, taking it out, out of their budget, putting it back into the general pen fund carryover. That's it. So well, it seems like it's tied on the budget as we are right now, but that's uh, uh, something we should do. It's would like to think that you wouldn't have to and that none of the departments would overspend their budget. The reality is um, sometimes that money gets reallocated for raises that aren't in the budget, they weren't originally budgeted, or they then spend money that would have went back to cash carryover and they go over on a line item, but because their salaries, are, there's a buffer in the salaries, they don't go over. It happens. Um, I'm going to say it doesn't. Uh, there are five departments that has the potential of happening in. Um, three of them are probably so small that there's really no opportunity there for them to be, be any kind of significant. I don't want to call it a savings, but a change. And that leaves you really two budgets that you're talking about that have any kind of wages that, that would be enough to I, I would suggest we put it on the agenda at least to discuss it. Well, back on the retiree sick leave payout, I, for one, don't agree with just completely doing away with it. We 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 did that to fix a problem right. because that's the way they did it before. They just yanked it out from people that they'd already promised to do. When you, when you hired on, you were promised a certain set of benefits and a certain pay scale. And then they just yank that one away from people in, in midstream. If you want to get rid of it, the way to do it is new apply it to the new hires. Yep, new hires. When you hire somebody on new, say, well, we used to have this benefit, we don't anymore. But I do not agree with taking away from people that have already got it. I, I would 100% I would agree with you if we could afford it. I, I, and, and, I understand and what you're saying. I would also about say that there, there are a lot of people who. When they started, but now we do. So they were never promised that when they started, they're still here and they're getting it. So it goes both ways. I get the point. What I'm saying is I, it's on the table. I just want people to know that it's on the table. I hope we don't have to, to take it away, but it's on the table and it will be the first thing. Okay, and I'm just I'm just stating my position I, I, on it. I'd say I'm outside agencies would be the first thing. Those my things, things that are within my control. Yeah, that would be the first. Thing. Yeah, and I get it. I understand what you're doing. I'm just stating my position on it. Is you can do that for new hires, but it's not right to do that for existing employees that have already had that as part of their benefits. So, okay, we have I don't know if you want to break it down to. Who had it before and then right. got but it and then got it back possible. and then didn't get it back. Do do like make people and that discussion is about we could have either increased what the make employees had to pay pay. for their health yeah. insurance. You know, pay out. Get it up. Or sickly, I mean, might have to do away with it. People should so have to take you have a decision that might impact everybody. You do have to pay more. There's all kinds of benefits for adjusting them so they don't have to. We held health insurance the same. Yes, we need to know what the cost is like. You might have to get rid of. You might have to lose something else to make that work. Yeah, and that's what We're I'm not saying. there yet. That's fine. Yeah, but I'm telling you that. And that's fine with me because because to me that's a that's just not the right thing to do. So I understand 
what you're trying to do. Yep. I appreciate that. I'm just telling you where I what I feel. Yep. So is that all we got? We've had enough. We've had enough. <laughs> I think anyway. Thanks everybody. See you in the morning. Boy, a lot of numbers, yeah. I would, like, I would like for all of you to know that we're ending early today. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Nine o'clock away my break. I wasn't I wasn't even supposed to start until for another twenty minutes. <laughs> And tomorrow we don't have a lot, right? Just the outside yeah, agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a special meeting at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Fire district. That should go pretty well.